All right, we're here. We're here at a new studio on location. On uh, I'm not going to say where it is, but you can't even get in, Chad, if you want to, because it's at uh, the security. It's not some shitty fucking column Tyrell fucking studio where you just anybody walks in and fucking murders you, right? right? Mario, we're on camera too, right, Adam? Yeah. All right, this is Mario Bosco, right, Mario? Yes, I am. What's your uh, Twitter? Twitter is Mario Bosco Comedy. It's and everything. Instagram and TikTok. Mario Bosco Comedy. That's fair. And Lev Fur, Lev, what's am I saying that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're is saying, that for real? Yeah. What's your full name though? I, I don't like giving the full name. All right, name. good. Yeah. You're smart because you're yeah. Yeah. You've what's been smart? around. He's Never. a comedian. He's supposed to give his full name. No, he's not. Nobody's nobody's what, what's Louis full CK's name full name? Yeah, exactly. You don't exactly. need to fucking know his fucking name. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> okay. All right. You could have booked different guests. Like we are polar opposites. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like an experiment. I'm still processing what this show is right now. <laughs> no, it's funny because I I was like busy all weekend. I'm not. Yeah, it was Father's Day. Thank you, but it was Father's Day weekend, and uh, so whatever. We I wasn't even around, and then. And then, luckily, you when did you cancel on me yesterday? Yesterday, <laughs> today. No, it was yesterday, right? I canceled on you yesterday for today's show. Yeah. So yeah. you and then I even forgot we had. I would have remembered, but because uh, I had it set up that way. But anyway, but this is a new studio. So, so in the process of like doing all the shit, and then I was in Atlantic City with Levy uh, Friday and Saturday. So, uh, so I'm like driving back and forth and all the shit, and I'm like, hey, I gotta get a guest. So thank God you canceled. Yeah. And then for some reason I thought of you. So it wasn't even like a plan, but uh, but I have a gift for uh, <laughs> putting people together. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, if you want to book at a circus here, you guys. <laughs> like, I think you're just like who would look hilarious together. Excuse me, speak for yourself. <laughs> no, I mean, First of all, how old are you, Mario? I'll be big five zero January nineteenth. He's fifty. Wow. And he he's, he's like you could be his son. You could yeah. be his goddamn son. Oh my god. He's twenty fucking five. Yeah. And you're twice his size. I'm not telling you, I'm not cheap shot of you, but you, because <laughs> well, we did a scene together. I, I, uh, what do you call it that we did? We shot a little, uh, I guess a short, short film. Yeah, and I thing. had to call you like a fat fuck like seven times yeah. and you kept laughing, but, but, uh, but you gained weight. How much you gained weight during the pandemic? Yeah, I gained like five or 10 pounds. So what, what, so you think you're twice his size? I think I'm definitely more than twice his size. <laughs> no, you're not. I promise. No, you. it doesn't work that way. Like, even if it looks like you're twice his size, it, it doesn't work. Mario, that what way. do you weigh? I weigh a hundred. I weigh more than twice as size. Thought, you only weigh a hundred. That's it. We're gonna have to bring a fucking scale in here. You weigh a hundred <laughs> pounds. You're like a leprechaun. Yeah, probably you, right now like ninety. Why? Cause you cause you walked here. No, I you don't. You weigh a hundred pounds. Yeah. Wow. What did you What did you think you weighed? I yeah. Everybody weighs at least one twenty. <laughs> My son almost weighs a hundred, and he's he's uh, like nine. I don't want to give us real uh, age, but. He's like nine. You can't because <laughs> you don't He's know it. Because you're not giving your real name. No, I mean, that's that's not that's that's little. You're a little guy. So have you you've always are you are you fluctuating? It's the same all the time. Same. It's been the same forever. And you're gonna be fifty. I'll be fifty. Wow. All right. Wow. This is. I didn't even know. I thought you were like Adam. Did you know how old he was? I think at one point I knew, but. When we were at the comic I, I strip live. I don't keep live. I don't keep track. Yeah, when we were at the comic strip live one time when it we It probably did, came up. Yeah. It came up. But it blows my mind that you're that you're fifty. Blows my mind. Blows anyway, my where mind. are you living now? You living with your sister? Still with my sister. Uh my mom died, so I'm living with her and it's like that party crasher that comes in four in the morning, two in the morning, six in the morning. It's like, Hey, we gotta go to work. I'm a comic. I work too. Well, where? <laughs> yeah, but you don't. You come in at two in the morning. Two, from where? Three playing cards. Hanging yeah, but you're not out. doing not doing stand up. I do stand up till like one. Like last night, I did LOL till like one thirty. Then by the time I got home, it was two thirty, quarter to three. By the time the lights are on, I have to go to bed, to eat, snack, do this, watch some shows. I'm not in bed till four five. And if I'm going out after comedy, playing cards. I'm totally fucked. Did you ever hear the Bill Burr story with LOL? 
Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's it might be my favorite comedy story. Yeah, but how did they not know? How did they not know? How, how do you not know? How do you not know? Like basic, <laughs> the, the most famous three comedians. Yeah, how do you not like? Even if you're an idiot, you still got to know something. Like yeah. if, if if you're in the business, you got to know somebody. You have to, yeah. You have to have at least heard of the most famous. Yeah, comedians. and then and then even when he said his name, they're like. Uh, we're gonna have to call the manager or whatever. Well, no, I heard that they were like, "Well, where have you performed?" And he's like, <laughs> "Madison Square Garden." <laughs> and they were like, "Well, we'll take a look." <laughs> like, and then he was like, "All right, fuck this," and he left. Wow. Isn't it the greatest? Like, he just did MSG, and then he can't get up at fucking LOL. And that was during the pandemic, right? When he was here to do SNL. No, he was doing. Uh, I think he was shooting uh, Pete Davidson's movie at the time. Oh yeah. Oh, that was when it before the pandemic. I think so. Yeah. I and think when he did crashing. Before. Yeah. What? Didn't wasn't he doing crashing? No. I, I can't wrap my head around that fucking show. How that show ever got made? What crashing? Yeah. What's crashing? Pete Holmes? Who's the audience? The audience is what? like open what? mic you, comedians. You were on crashing. Wait, what? Like the show crashing? Like yeah. who's the who is it made for? Right. Like who's the viewer? Right. The viewer is open mic comics. Right. But they figured out there's so many open mic comics in the world that you can make a show for them. Like, there's enough of them. Yeah. There's fucking 20 million of them in America. Well, you know, Louie thinks that they just basically stole his his show. Oh, really? Yeah. Because he doesn't like... Louis who? Does, Louis C.K. I'm kidding. That you can't... I don't, <laughs> that's, exactly. not, that's not his real name. Chad, that's not his last name. Let's get Chad Zumak in. We can't afford him. But uh, <laughs> but Louis Bail. says that... Louis doesn't like... Uh, now, I'm, now, now I'm saying all my Louis stories because... Because uh, whatever. Anyway, Louis says that... Uh, can you tell he doesn't about like me? he doesn't like uh he doesn't like Judd Apatow and he doesn't like he hates Pete Holmes. Well so Apatow fucking like ratted him out and went against him when Louie got in trouble. Yeah, but Apatow's a fucking bitch because uh I, I said to Louie, I go, he kissed your ass totally when you were when you were before you got yeah, canceled, yeah. right? Yep. And then as soon it's just one of those things where it's like as soon as you get canceled, then he's like he goes, Yeah, well, I'm done with you. So it's just it's a it's like uh, I mean, you could even be done with somebody, but then to like go on the radio and be like, I was disappointed. Yeah. And it's like, no, comics are like politicians. They're just, yeah. they stand for nothing. They yeah. just stand for whatever looks good and whatever helps them. So uh, that's why I risk my career backing you up. Thank you. <laughs> no, but the point is that uh, so, so Louis was like, they just did, they basically did a version of his show where like a comic uh, living in New York and. Yeah. Bouncing around and not not things happen to him. I I yeah I agree with you on your take, but also it's like Pete Holmes is like gigantic. So why would you make a gig a show about a gigantic open micer? Because every 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 clip they showed, he's talking down to everybody. Yeah. And then and then I was in a couple of scenes, and then uh uh all his girlfriends had to be tall. Yeah. So they were just, he was always surrounded by tall women. It was so fucking stupid. And that's when you, that's when, you know, where I live, I'm not going to say where I live, but I'll say New Jersey. I live in New Jersey. That's as far as you sound like you're lying. That's as specific as I'm going to get. My wife goes, Oh, they're making a movie up the street or they're making a, a TV show. I'm like, I don't give a shit because I was, I was at it. They were making Crashing. And it's such a waste of time and money and everything. Yeah. So it's like, who gives a fuck about a fucking show? But when you're starting out, like like Mario, even though you're like 50, when you're starting out, you, you're like, oh, my God, I want to be in a movie. I want to sit right, in a right. trailer. And then, and then when you do it, you're like, this is the dumbest it fucking. Sucks. It fucking sucks. It's the dumbest fucking thing. And, like, you know, they always, actors always say it. Like, when you're in a trailer, and then all of a sudden you have to be like, you have to do the scene. You've been sitting around all day. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you have to be like alive and fucking emotionally yeah. alive. And it's hard. That's why they do cocaine. Yeah. Right? When I did NYPD Blue, they're like, hurry up. Get, get, get him ready. Get him dressed. Get him ready. Get him in here. Get him in makeup. Get him. Okay. You can go to your trailer and relax now. Are you fucking serious? You rushed me from the hotel. Like you were pulling me out. I didn't even brush my teeth. You got me here. And now you're rushing me to do the scene. And wait. hurry up and wait. Uh, that's what happened. That's with me what they, that's what you. That's what they should call it, right? Hurry up that's and wait. Thing. 
I know. <laughs> do you sleep? What do you sleep in? Do you, are you like a formal pajama person? Is there uh, is there no. a bow tie in the bed? No. No. No, I sleep in underwear and a t-shirt. Or okay. sometimes no t-shirt and sometimes yeah. no underwear. Do you ever sleep in a row? You sleep naked? Sometimes. Like, don't you think he has like suspenders on his boxers? Like, it looks like Custy He's Amato. like a young Larry King. <laughs> <laughs> Good Mario. morning, everybody. Today is Larry King. <laughs> Wait, who's your plan, NYPD Blue? I played the next door neighbor to a murder victim called Anthony. I shot 21 days in beautiful Beverly Hills. And what were you supposed to be? Were you supposed to be like a young person? Yeah. I was a, like 20, a kid? A man, 27 years old, where the detectives were trying to figure out who I was and my age at the same time. Get the fuck out. So you're 50 and you can play a 27 year old. That's right. That's you can play a 12 year old. 12 year old. I played. I, <laughs> last right. You have to bring your porn into this, Kevin. No, no, no. There ain't no porn, buddy. My I son played... met him and he goes, who's he wanted to play? He wanted to play go on the swings with him. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> True. We. Did I you meet played... my son? Yes. When we were at the comic strip. Yeah, I thought so. And your daughter. Well, you want to date her? Oh, you're disgusting. <laughs> How is your love life? Flat. Too busy means. getting my career up. Too busy rocking oh and rolling. <laughs> I'm doing no no joke. I'm doing 35 shows a month, three for a day with three days off a month, and hardly no sleep. I'm running LOL Long Island everywhere, but it's fantastic. How do you two know each other? It's fantastic. How we mean? <laughs> <laughs> Carrie Caravas, probably. Yes, right there, Carrie Caravas. You should be like Batman and Robin. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, so you're doing thir- So you do that many Where are you getting that many sets? Governors, LOL, Broadway All New York City comedy clubs Everywhere Have you got in the cellar yet? No Was I supposed to get you yeah, in? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm still waiting for you <laughs> I'm still waiting You said I'm going to get you in The last time we spoke was at the brokerage You said to me I will get you in at the stand and Not the stand You said the stand I don't even work at the stand you know yeah, why don't why aren't you at the stand I'm anymore? I'm banned. No, no you're way. not. Shut up, dude. Shut up. You got a pride thing going on with them? No, 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 no. What's going on? No, I just I put it when the pandemic last year. What what year is it? 2021 when when the club opened, yeah. I put in for like June. That was the first month they were open, May or June. Yeah, I put in like a lot of dates because the cellar was open. I was back kind of doing spots and. So I said, uh, no, I think I told I told text to Patrick. I said uh, I didn't put it in for May, but if someone cancels, you know. Yeah, yeah. So then for June, I put in a lot. He didn't give me anything. So then I started saying I was banned. And then people were like, um, people are tweeting at at the stand, whoever runs their <laughs> thing. Like, why is Kevin Brennan banned? He's like, he's not banned. Yeah. But I might. Wait, wait, Kevin, you're not a first month back in business comic. You're not no, a welcome I back. No, you're but a plus third they, month. Plus, they manage <laughs> people. They manage people, so yeah. they got to give all their people things. But right, it's right. like, but but if I don't get spots, I'm, I I. It's more fun to say I'm banned. I mean, what I'm gonna say? Have like, you put in since? No. So put in. What are you doing? Yeah. I don't want to. Now it's about. Now it's about pride. pride. The first time I ever uh, met you is in the green room while they were switching venues, and you were sitting there steaming. It was me. Where? It was like it was a uh, subculture. It was like this basement room they were doing temporarily, and you were sitting. Oh, was that the? Oh, that was at the restaurant. No, it it, it was like on fucking Bleecker Street. Oh, I know you that. remember that place, the yeah. bra- the theater place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were sitting in the green room steaming. I was hosting the show. You had this energy of like, do not talk to me. I was sitting there next to Chris Stefano, and you got up and left. I was like, does that guy fucking hate me? And he goes, no. He's just like that. Like, don't worry about it. <laughs> and then afterwards, you were nice. And then the next time I was talking to you was at the stand. You murdered. It was like sold out show. There's like Kevin's up there fucking killing. Right. I don't remember that. You haven't. I don't think I've ever killed at the stand. You you do. You were killing at the new stand at the new stand. There was a ch- there was two hot young chicks in the front row. They were like 21. And there were the only two people in the crowd not giving it to you. And you fucking murdered. You came off stage. I was like, great set. You go, I almost kicked that cut in the head. <laughs> You're so furious. No, I, I don't like it when they're, because I feel like at the stand, they're like, it's more like, um, I don't explain it, but they want to see you or they want to see Mark Norman. Like, they want to see, like, guys that they think are cute. Yeah. So I don't, I don't think, like, so when, when I'm getting a vibe, like, they don't like me just because I'm not cute or because I'm too old. Like, I want to kick them right you in their fucking. You mean he's fuckable? Head. No, he before he fucking went Bobby Kelly on us, uh, he was <laughs> like he was like every fucking every female comic wanted to have sex with him. I don't yeah. know if they still do. 
Like Feehan and all those whores, they still want to. <laughs> Have you ever opened for you? him? A what? Have you ever opened for him? No, no, I've never opened anything I've opened for him. I've opened for him. Open? What do you mean open? I don't even fuck. I'm not. I open for people. I I open for Levy. I'm not even like a, a comic anymore. Really, I'm just like a about? personality. Oh, stop! Yeah, I've opened for you many of times. I've hosted for you, and then I'm about to stand. That's at governors. That's just. That's not me. That's not me requesting you. I, I'm not saying I wouldn't. I'm. I'm. I'm yeah, it's like I take him on. It's like I take him on a row with me. Yeah, I yeah, put yeah. him in the fucking overhead bin. <laughs> the glove box. Yeah. No, I I've hosted a few at governors, but also I you put me at the stand when we did that table thing, and you had different comics come up and do time. Where? In the upstairs room in the new location. When we did a live thing with Brian McCarthy. Yeah. Oh, you went on. You did time. Yeah, I did time. Yeah, Brian likes. Oh you. yeah, yeah. He he. I remember that. It Brian loves him, right? Yeah, he does. Well, Brian thinks he's hilarious because he's always like talk, talking like he's a fucking gangster. Yeah, yeah. What's up? You want to talk some business? Come outside. We go talk now. Give me a couple of toothpicks. <laughs> Give me a couple of toothpicks. <laughs> Kevin, are you fucking with me today? <laughs> <laughs> like. It- <laughs> I knew this. I knew this booking would be weird, but I I don't. I listen. I'm I'm like uh, what's that guy in CBS? Uh, James uh, Corden. The, yeah, I'm like James Corden. I'll I'll put I'll like you're the Jimmy Fallon of podcast. No, Elton John's dude. coming in next. Like <laughs> I I just I mix and match people. No, but he's he's like uh, I don't even know what to think of him because he's like really ambitious. Like he always wants to do shows, and yeah, I'm like that's that's a good trade of fifty. It's yeah, not but- even at fifty. <laughs> I've always been in show business since thirty six. I'm a I'm a SAG actor. Yeah. No, I'm, just, I'm just fucking years. with you. No, no, I'm, so, I'm serious. I'm only in stand up. I'm only in stand up like you five years. You pick them up in oh, December and five years. That's it. What did you do before? You were just an actor. I'm just an actor, and I became a comic because I couldn't stand going to the audition, thirty auditions, booking one, and then having to wait when I'm going to do this part and how big the part is. Now I'm a comic. I work all the time, and I'm happy. So you have like an agent, you have represent because I could say you on Fallon. Like I think Fallon, I Fallon. I was just at the comedy cellar and some guy was like, his hook was that he was deaf, mm-hmm. so he had a he had like a a lady signing with him on stage. Yeah, on sidekick, stage? huh? Sidekick, you know, sign language. Yeah, not s- <laughs> sidekick and sign language are two different things. But yeah, she's both. She's like his sidekick the interpreter. Yeah, but it was, but it's like a bit, but, but I, so I don't know if he's fucking, I don't know if the guy's really deaf. Yeah. So, but that's what, that's what Fallon loves. Like he loves like shtick, uh, like disabilities are in. Yeah. No, he loves vaudeville kind of a shit. So did you send him your thing yet? Um, to who? Fallon? To NBC. I've sent him to everybody. Uh, Who sent it? You send it? I send it. Who am I going to get to send it? Get a fucking agent. Agent, agent. Who, Roger Paul? Yeah, why not? Yeah. How about how about James from Governors? Can he hook you up with somebody? I don't know. I'll ask him, but we'll see. But no, I've asked Roger Paul to put some calls out. He's like, have you ever worked with that person before? I'm like, no. Well, then I can't do it. Okay. Kevin, are you repped? He's repped. I don't even know. <laughs> I'm so... Wait, let me think. Let me think. I'm so curious. When's the last time you had like a TV agent? No, I'm trying to think when I like what happened. <laughs> <laughs> no, sometimes I think I'm like, am I? I feel like no, like it's funny because like sometimes I have like a, a agent and a manager, and right. then I and then like a year later I have nothing. Aren't you managed by that one dude, the Who? big guy? Who? Who's what's his name? Oh no! For like a minute, for a yeah. minute oh. I was. Who are we? His name? He like works with Apollo and shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, you know what happened was because uh, uh, he want. I'm not gonna say his name because he might beat me up. Oh, plus I don't want. I, I don't want. Oh, yeah, Artie's gonna beat me up. Not Artie's Artie. gonna punch his own fucking nose. That fucking. <laughs> he junkie. worked with Artie though. Not Artie. That guy. Lang. What's his name? Ari. Artie. He reaches it out to me on Twitter. He wants to represent me. Atticus Flynn. Yeah, that's. Oh. A- <laughs> Even I know who that is. You do? Yeah. I think I've seen a DM. No, now, supposedly, <laughs> wait, he runs uh, Florentine's TikTok? That's what I saw. There was a big announcement. Yeah, but that was, I think, that, but that was on April 1st. So I don't know if it was. Oh, maybe. Yeah. But maybe he did because he runs Chad's TikTok. 
Anyway, so this guy, uh, I'm gonna say his name, but um, anyway, that was I, that was uh, he you had a falling he, out with him. No, I didn't have a falling out. I was just no. Oh, I know what happened. I know what happened. <laughs> so right when I left Compound Media, oh no, I I he runs a club upstate. Okay. So then uh, I I was with Louis up there like uh, tw- end of twenty. I don't know, whenever, when Louis started go- making, uh, when he started coming back. Right, right. So, uh, so I don't really, I didn't really know him. I never worked up there before. So then he's, he said, uh, he goes, do you have a problem with Artie Lang? I go, nothing special. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, I go, why? He goes, cause I, you know, I run his Twitter and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, right, man- right, I kind of right. manage him. I go, <laughs> I go, no, nothing special. Like, you know, Artie's a piece of shit, and uh, I didn't say it, but yeah, yeah, I go, yeah, you yeah. know, Artie's a fucking junkie, so, uh, you know, and he fucking came after me a couple times, so, of course, I'm going to throw it back in his fucking right, right. junkie face. So uh, so then when I when I left Compound Media, he was he was starting, like, a, a, like a podcast network or something, so he contacted me. I don't know why he contacted me, but... Um, so then, but the more I talk to him, the more I realize. So then I'm like, yeah. And then he manages people too. I go, why don't you, why don't you manage me too? If you're going to, if we're going to be doing a podcast thing together. So he said, okay. And then, but the more, the more I talk to him, I realize he, he don't even know my show. Cause I was telling him about Brian McCarthy. I go, yeah, he's like blind and, uh, and he's, you know, he's an alcoholic and he's blind. He goes, well, why don't you get, why don't you get, why don't you get him? I I don't know how, but I'm but I realized he don't listen to the show. Mm-hmm. So I was like, well, why does he want me on his fucking podcast? Yeah, he's trying studio? to find already a nose. It's fucking he's busy. Yeah. So, but then, but then during the pandemic, I he sent me like a he sent me like a text or an email. I didn't respond right away, and then 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 the le- next thing I next time I checked, I was off his roster. Yeah. He yeah. didn't tell me. I was just <laughs> I went to his website. I wasn't on it anymore. You gotta kind of respect that too though. That's like now you don't have to have a talk about it or a fucking argument or yeah, anything. Yeah, no, know? I didn't I didn't I I was kind of relieved, you know? Yeah, yeah. Cause I got a wife. I don't know if I need a manager now. Yeah. You know? Plus a manager, the problem with the manager is like it's like having a pa- it's like having parents. Like I'm one of ten. Yeah. So when you have a manager, it's the it's like the same thing. It's like they tell everyone basically to do the same thing. It's so, you're just uh you're there for they're there for a three AM call of like, I'm I'm stressed about this. Do you think I should do that? And then what your manager calls you? No, like you need to if you need to call them or like oh. you need to cancel a date or something, they'll be the bad guy and fucking right. you know, they'll send the Right, email. but they don't they don't really they're not they're not they're not concerned necessarily unless you're like their best client, they're not concerned about your best interest. They're concerned about their best interest. And they bait, but they also tell you just to do what everybody else is doing. Like, get, like get a website to do, do a tape, a special. Yeah. They, they, they have everyone doing the same thing. My guy, he just, he's just there when I need him. Like if I go, what do you think of this? How long have you, you had him? This? It's been a while. Like, uh, I don't know, five years. Oh, that's What's good. his name? Um, he probably can't say it, can you? I don't. I don't like putting. But I'm. I'm I, I don't I'm, even say your real. You don't yeah. say your name. I, I'm not even. I'm not even. Uh, if you could blur me out, that'd be great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just a big ass blur next to no, Mario. Uh, no, I don't. I'm s- rep too with agents, but they we only booked one thing ever, and then that was like it. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Like it's it's weird when you. I mean, if you're like a commercial actor and and you need an agent to right. get you like auditions constantly. But if you're a comic and they just cons, you know, whatever. But um, yeah, yeah I, I just booked a, a thing that like looks like it's gonna get made and it's gonna be a cool thing. But that was like just through what is comics. It? What like, is it? I, I can't say anything about it yet because what it's... can you talk about? <laughs> you can't talk about nothing. <laughs> you, know what? you don't even say where you fucking live. You won't say your I city. Well, I was playing off of you, not just giving your real name. <laughs> uh, no, but that was no. Just that's why. I, that's comedy. a good point because yeah. usually you get stuff through comics. You know, yeah. your manager, your agent, basically gets you like nothing. Yeah, I mean, I booked, I was on Ray Donovan that was through an audition. Like, if you want to audition for, like, those kind of shows, you need an agent. But other yeah. than that, like, uh, like my touring agent is, like, so high up that he doesn't he doesn't do anything for me. He's, like, he's repping, like, fucking theater people. Yeah. So, I, I, I as a bluff, I sent him an email, like, because he hasn't been helping me. I was like, yeah. I think I'm going to start booking my own dates, you know. To get him to like, and he goes, "That sounds great." <laughs> He's like, "I love it, love the enthusiasm." <laughs> and I was like, "You," I was like, "That was a total bluff." I'm not doing that. No, it's the worst. Yeah, 
No, but that's the worst when you, it's like saying a girl like, I, yeah. we should date other people. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we should definitely date other people. That's a fuck. I'm dating other guys right now. So that's fucking that's fantastic yeah. that you agree. Yeah. <laughs> Now, uh, 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 whatchamacallit, uh, I, I don't know if you know if you should tell this story, but uh, what's the guy's name? Um, Berkowitz? Mike yeah, Berkowitz? Yeah. yeah. Um, Florentine, he, he's not with them anymore, but he was with them, and uh, he was like the for guy's first client, you know? Oh, really? And then uh, one day he was like, he went on their website, whatever, whoever he was working for, because I Berkowitz, I think, is switching back and forth to different places, but... Uh, but Florentine noticed he wasn't even on their website anymore, you know? I was, honestly got to check if I'm fucking even on. No, so he's like, am I? He goes, are we still working together? And the guy's like, yeah, but because because he had like, he had graduated to like Amy Schumer. And yeah, yeah. Kevin Hart. He so they're to, charging me per image on the website. So I got to. They are? No, no, it's, that's what he's telling them. Oh, yeah, no, because, uh, because, yeah, so he was mad that, you know, but that's how it works. They, they, the thing is, it's like, like I did this thing in Atlantic City and I know they're going to say to leave you that like I wasn't friendly enough. So it's like you constantly have to like if you're not doing great, you constantly have to worry about like all this dumb shit, you know, like. Yeah. If you like, don't book, a, if you don't like get shit every year or two with them in that time frame, like it's, they just go, oh, it's not really amounting to anything. Why? Yeah. Keep working together. Yeah. They all. The, I mean, it to their credit, like they're not supposed to have a backbone. Their, their whole job is like, you're, you're making money today. Let me figure out how to put you into ways to make more money so I can take a piece of that. Right. That's the whole thing. So it's like a manager, though, like I feel like my manager is like behind me. You know what I mean? Like in theory. Yeah. I feel like my manager's never going to drop me because I got in trouble. You know what I mean? Like whereas my I, agents, I expect like if I got in enough heat immediately, they'd be like, yeah, this is just bad business, you know? So what kind of heat? You know, yeah. just you never fucking rape. Know. <laughs> Thank the you, Kevin. Appreciate it. <laughs> you no, know, well, Louis got dropped by everybody. Everybody, yeah. He said a very funny thing on Shane's podcast. Right? What did he say? He was like, uh, he's he talking about the presidents. Yeah, but when he was talking, he was like talking about the industry. In the end, he's like, he was, he's like, you know, back in the day, he's talking about all the cool shit he got to do, like the advantages of being, you know, yeah. the guy on top. And he's like, yeah, he's like, I was like, yeah, my like. Uh, a uh, press person got me into the White House. He's like, by the way, I have none of these people anymore. <laughs> like, yeah. just everybody fucking cut him off, which is the, the same thing with Shane. Like, Shane got fired by everybody, and then Shane tells the story, like, but they kept Jesse Smollett on their roster. <laughs> the agents <laughs> really? did. So they fired him <laughs> for a joke that missed, but they kept Jesse Smollett for an actual crime. Wow. Yeah. Didn't he die? Who? Jesse? No, he's in. Uh, he's doing a, a sentence right now. Yeah, he had. He did. He's in jail. Time. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, is it Jesse or Jesse? Jesse. Juicy. Juicy Smoulet. Juicy. <laughs> Chappelle called him Juicy yeah. Smoulet. The French actor. <laughs> That's French actor. That's the best joke on that special. That I know. I so know. That's funny. the one I saw. I saw. I don't know where I saw that. I was like, it's the whole specials like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the one he won the thing for. I called him a. I I sent him a text off of that. Yeah, to Chappelle. Yeah, because he was complaining that uh, <laughs> about the critics. Right, right. I said the thing was called Sticks and Stones. Yeah, and you're mad. I was like, wow, that must be nice. <laughs> <laughs> must be nice to fucking win an Emmy. And yeah. have it called Sticks and Stones and still complain about the critics. But I feel like if you winning an Emmy and that shit, like in what we do, I don't think it means anything. I don't think it leads to another thing. Like, what do you mean? Like, like if Louis wins a fucking Emmy for a special, what does that translate to? Like, what does that go to? Like, yeah, does... but they like to win. They like to win. Sure, but then, like, I mean, I'm sure he wants to be in theaters more than he wants to win a fucking Emmy. Who? Like, a guy like Louis or, like, a guy like Chappelle. Chappelle's new documentary, they won't play it in any theaters. Why? Because he was, like, uh, for the LGBT shit, he was in, in oh. Dice for them, so they wouldn't screen it anywhere. Wait, he made a documentary? Yeah. He Who made, made it? He made it yeah. himself? He made a documentary about, like, the pandemic shows, I think. And uh, because of the LGBT shit, they, I think they just couldn't find anybody to fucking play it. So they had to do it all themselves, like, on a much smaller run. Yeah, but he doesn't, I don't think he cares, though. Does he? I think he does. I mean, he's put four, he spent four specials talking about it. No, I don't think he cares that he can't put the thing out uh, in a, in a um, theater. I think you'd care. 
You imagine how much no, fucking I, work goes into that. And you're like, I can't even fucking. Yeah, do but this. he's still he's still making all this money and he's still getting all these awards. These guys, listen. All I know is that they 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 what they really think you don't really know. You know. But don't you feel like like you're like you know those guys? Don't you feel like you get used to shit really fucking quick? And you know when from our angle we're like he's winning all this shit, but I'm sure he's not like. I'm a fucking winner. I'm feeling great. Like they're focusing on what's not working. Who, Chappelle? Yeah, like the the top guys. I don't guys. think Chappelle is. I don't think Chappelle is. No, I think Louis. I think I think Chappelle is like. He's like I'm the greatest, and I can do whatever I want. That's why I think when he gets a little pushback, he's like a little confused because he's like, "You guys don't love me." I yeah. think they get. I think they get obsessed with like people loving them. So then, when people don't, that they use that to like get them upset you know right but um but you know i i don't know like i think in louis case louis got canceled and then and then he was just basically in survival mode and now he's like n- now i don't know what's going on i don't know what's going on like i don't know he's if he's got he thinks, that new movie coming out soon. yeah but i don't know if he's thinking like like i'm winning now yeah because uh because they he can always say like no i'm doing terrible right because look, look what I used Compared to Compared to what he used to have. Yeah, yeah, I used to be, I used to write jokes for Obama. Yeah. That was one of the funny things he had uh, about uh, when he got caught and, and he was talking about his special, like basically like Obama knows. Yeah, right, like, right, 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 right. Everybody knows what he does, like <laughs> yeah. everybody. And then he did the Obama voice like, mm. Yeah. Like, Louis is, he's the best comic. I think he's alive. He's the best guy. I don't. Yeah, Louis good. I don't good. think it's close. I think Chappelle's better than Louis, but you think so? Yeah. Today, like to today's standard, I just think Chappelle has more. He has more versatility. He can do more. Like I've seen, Lou, I've seen way more shows with Louis. Yeah. But uh, I Chapp- actually think it's the other way. I think Louis has more tools in the box. No, I don't disagree because because Chappelle can kind of he's a good mimic. Like Louis can do that, uh, but not as good as Chappelle. And then Chappelle's more charismatic than Louis. But Louis, Louis strong. Louis strong in a sense that like he's always kind of been like not afraid yeah. of crowds. Right. Where Chappelle was always like uh he was more uh what's the word I'm looking for? Where like he would he would uh seduce them or something with his even when he was a kid, he would fucking yeah. the crowds always loved him. So he uses that the fact that they always love him to kind of so i don't know i think he's i think he's mentally ill i think he's mentally ill now <laughs> that's a I long think way. everybody that's in comedy is mentally ill no? that's not true that's that's the that's the fallacy it's like not everybody it's like saying every cop is a racist everybody's not anything like you're like you're 50 and he's 25 so how can you say that but I all think- comics are, are the same. Uh, we have any traits common. Because- the only trait we have in common is that we like to go on stage or whatever. But I think it's a form of OCD or a form of some kind of... Uh, yeah, but that's not mental illness. Well, it is. If you have OCD or if you have some kind of, uh, you know, situation. Because remember one thing. Comics pull their material from their past life. So that's like rewinding. I don't know why I feel like Kevin's going to punch you. <laughs> it's not even, I would do it except there's cameras here. <laughs> like every time he starts, I just see Kevin just staring at I him. I just feel like he should be sitting in my lap with that fucking outfit on. You guys do a ventriloquist. Hello, hello, yeah. hello, yeah. hello, hello. No, no but people I... think it's like such a cop. Or like people, you know, all comics are mentally ill. It's, that's not true. But the point is, I know a lot of comics that are like, the opposite. They're like dull to a fault. You know, they sh- there's no way they should be comics because they're so boring. I think but a I'm lot s- of them are very emotionally underdeveloped. I think Probably. I know I can thing. I can attribute myself to yeah. that. I can definitely put myself in that category. Yeah. But um, I think Chappelle is is a uh, I either he got he got stuck trying to think of material or he's he was so spent when he did all those Netflix things like too too much too soon. Cause it's like to go after LGBTQ like so much. It's like either something happened or he's just like he's like crazy. I think you might. I think you can you can get a little crazy. I think I listen. All, all we all like when you look at Michael Jackson or Elvis Presley. Like when you become so high up and uh, no one will dare say fucking boo to you. That's why I always fucking say boo to people. Yeah. Cause they, they can't, they fucking freak out. I, I, I've told the story a million times. I texted Chappelle that he was entitled cunt. 
He responded in four minutes. Yeah. But if I said something nice to him, he would he I could send I could text him every day. He would ghost me. Right, right. But but I told him he, I said he was a cunt, and he fucking four minutes later, four minutes yeah. later. So I think. But I think also guys. No, but they're so used to like they're yeah. so used to getting no pushback that they like. They they basically self destruct, you know, right, because right. nobody says like, "What the fuck are you doing?" You know, and, and I think that's really terrible for artists at a top level. Like Drake just dropped a fucking horrendous album. Yeah, even my kids said that. Yeah, like, and that's the thing. And Chappelle's last, like, I'm a, I'm a, obviously, I'm a huge comedy fan. I'm huge into Chappelle, like all the greats. But like that last special, I can. There's two jokes in it. Like I remember the two yeah. lines that I'm like, and they're great lines. Yeah. They're Chappelle level lines. Yeah. But then it's like. Dude, trans people are like 0.001% of the population. Yeah. They don't deserve three specials. <laughs> it's true. a lot. Like, it's yeah. a, so it's like, and I get that his thing is like, now we're being bullied. Like, we're being bullied by these people that are, uh, you know, he's doing his take. He's like, in Hollywood, you can't make fun of LGBT people. I, if I'm making fun of you, I'm including you, like this and that. But it's just like, we just want to see you be great. Like, because when you watch him, I've seen Chappelle like 20 times live. When you in it in like in theaters clubs one time in a theater. No, but I'm saying, did you pay or you were just there? Uh, I didn't pay. One time I paid to see him in a in a theater, yeah. and that was the best. This was like 2016. Yeah. I just started doing comedy, and that was the best set I've ever seen from a yeah. comedian. It was like incredible. He had a whole theater of 2,500 people like in the palm of his fucking hand, sitting at the yeah. edge of their seats, waiting for every word. And it's because he was just being fucking him. Like, when yeah. he just applies his brain to, like, what is a really funny bit, like, new shit I've seen him work on, it's just hilarious. It's like, this is just funny, edgy, like, good material. He's, like, the best at that. But when it's, like, I just think when comedy is, like, starts getting kind of luxury and kind of mission statement-y, like... Yeah, but he runs out of... First of all, he runs out of shit to talk about. And then and then jokes are... It's easier to just lecture people than to do material, you know? So, so I think I, they get to a point where... He doesn't know what to do. So then he just lay. My wife said the same thing. It's just yeah. basically, it was just, there was no jokes. It was all lecture. Yeah. And that's, and even like if the, if the lecture you're giving is like on the side that I agree with you on, like to me, I'm like, it's still gay. It's yeah. like the other side of Hannah Gadsby. It's like right. in that realm, but it's like, it's almost like a way it's like, dude, you're so good. Yeah. You're so good. Like just fucking do. But the I thing. think people can't handle. I think pe there's a, po there's a point where people can't handle being like having that much power and, and having nobody ever saying you're a fucking idiot, you know, like, like I'm not comparing it to Cosby, but it's like, if you, if nobody ever says no to you, then you're, especially as a comic, you're going to keep fucking pushing the envelope because yeah. that's kind of the job of, 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 right, right. of a comic. So if you, if you're, if people are saying you're the greatest, then you just keep, then then he's like he's, he probably thinks he struck gold with the with the lgbtq stuff but i also think he's it's as the first one of our time. fucking guests is yawning i'm sorry <laughs> i also think it's no like i know you're playing pinochle all fucking night so <laughs> no i'm just saying like i think even with louis like i think louis was like helped by getting canceled because it gave his career like a second life and now he's like famous and infamous so but I think otherwise he was just going to go down that same road where he would just get more like, because he already was like before he got canceled, I, I would see him like at clubs in New York. And it was like, he would just say shit that the crowd didn't agree with. Cause it was like, that was because he was like, all right, I can do jokes that they're going to laugh yeah, at, but yeah. I, I'd rather push the envelope. So, so he was going that route. And, but now since he got canceled, he had to go back to jokes because no one wanted to hear his fucking opinions because they didn't like him. So then he was like, oh, I need jokes to fucking win these crowds over or for the crowds to like me. You know? Right. I mean, it might have made him. But the, the problem is, like, Louis has always been so fucking good that it's, like, hard to gauge, like, is he better now or better then? Because it's like. No, he's better now. You think so? Yeah, he's better now because he's wounded. And he's like, he 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 had to be he 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 had to step it up like at the special when he came back on. That had to be good because his career was on the line. Right, like right. And when, bef the, all the other specials leading. I was I was at the special. I was at dinner after he was going over it because a lot of the people that worked on that special, the 2020 special, yeah. they did a lot of his other specials. And he was basically shitting on his all his other specials. And, uh, you know, that's just you can do that when you just did a good one. And, you know, it's in the yeah. camp. But basically he was saying, like. Yeah, this is probably good because I wasn't doing anything else. Like he he was 
he wasn't working on TV shows and stuff. So, right, right. so, so even, I think he would say that that was one of his better ones. Also, he's inspired, you know, he was yeah. inspired because he got canceled. He knows everyone fucking hates him. So he's like, he had to step up. So that's, that's just how, it, that's just how it goes. I thought, you know, I, I remember I saw. <laughs> Didn't he get canceled for that joke he did? Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> no, no. So anyway, he. So I, I, I before I, I only started working with him after he got canceled because that's when I step in. That's when people reach out to me, <laughs> but nobody else will talk to him. Like Brennan, am had, I canceled? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> just fucking. Learn. Brennan's like Louis. Like Brennan has no friends. He just and and plus he knew I just got canceled at the Comedy Cellar. Yeah. So I he's understand. like, so he's like, hey, you know, maybe uh, Brennan will work with me. So, uh, uh, but, uh, I forgot what I was going to say. The point is that, uh, that, um, yeah. So when you're canceled, it's like, it's just easier to be like, like, well, he's got that bit about it. Like, you know, who? Your oh, no, what I was going to say is like before, <laughs> right, right. before, before he, uh, before he got canceled, uh, he did a, he did a show at Madison. He did some shows at Madison Square Garden. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that was when he did six or whatever, but, uh, Todd Barry opened for him, you know? Yeah. So I go, what do he close with? And um, he goes, oh, the 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 rats fucking on the subway platform. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, fucking Frank Sinatra closes it with my way. <laughs> and, fucking, and and Led Zeppelin stare right to heaven. And Louis doing the and I saw the bit. It's not a great bit. Like it'll get a reaction, but it's not like a, a bit that you close at Madison Square fucking garden with. So I think at that point. The fans didn't care. They'll they'll laugh at anything. They'll say no, they'll it, put him on a fucking pedestal no matter what he's doing. The 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 writing of the bit is not gonna blow you away. It's not Louis' best writing, but that moment when he he flips the rat over, that 30 second act out of then he after he's like fingering it, then spitting on his fingertips. That like Are I, you serious? I saw that in a club. Oh. It it blows the roof off the place. Like yeah, but I didn't remember that part. So maybe he made it better because I saw it. Yeah. I saw it when maybe he hadn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, he he hadn't perfected the fucking the rat on his, the on the his platform bit. Finesse <laughs> on the act out is like you ever did you see the bit where he does like how kids know how to ask each other out? Isn't his twenty seventeen special? No, he does this like this bit of like uh, kids become like Victorian. They're like, my man wants to inquire, and then he does like you know the kids talking to each other. Yeah, and like through proxies, and then uh, he does this act out about fingering where he goes. And he would like to know if he can finger her. And, and she's like, you are most bold, sir. But finger her you shall. <laughs> and, and he, so he, wait, the people are asking? Yeah, he's doing like that. And then he does this, uh, he does like a, a Victorian stance. And then he does this fingering act out. And he... It, it, this is different from the rat thing? It, it's a similar delivery. <laughs> no, no, but he does I'm like... seeing a theme. He, he's pantomiming a lot of fingering. He, he's got the great, the best fingering act outs in the yeah. business. Let me just say that, you know? But you see, he has a comic that doesn't doesn't pull away from saying, like, okay, I got canceled, but yeah. here I'm coming back. Like, I was at you Governor's Comedy Club. Way. No, seriously, I was at Governor's Comedy Club, and he did that thing with the... Do you uh, live at Governor's? Are you, like, in the basement over there? <laughs> he might He might as well, because they have a lot of rooms, right? They have Do a they lot really? of rooms. They have the podcast studio, and then they have the, the third room. They have five And then you could, five you could sleep in James' office. Oh, who's James? It. He's the guy who wears yeah, fucking he owns, suits he loves, and He loves... Uh, when it, Mario, he's always like, Mario just calls. <laughs> <laughs> Always, I go James. Uh, Whenever you work at any governor's, he's like Mario might be coming by. <laughs> Always, like, and then Mario walks in. You think he's gonna be like some big Italian, right, guy. right, right, right? And then it's this guy. So uh, I'll go James. Yeah, what do you want? Let's see, you got Kevin Brennan coming. Come on, you know I know him. Oh. All right, all right, do whatever the hell you want to do this week. Who did I open for? Uh, Tommy Gooch last week. Tommy Gooch. Tommy Gooch from Staten <laughs> Island. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. It's and like then, the all the Long Island guys are just or Kevin. Staten Island. They're all like Italian, and they yeah. all they basically all have the same act. I people love it. They all love the they love the act. I'm Tommy Gooch, and then the fucking the furniture with the fucking plastic and yeah. the, and the he didn't do it. Didn't it's like it. every every guy that we used to work at Atlantic City. They all have basically have the same act. Yeah, you two together. Seems like a state mandated anger management buddy. Like he's like your your parole officer of anger. Yeah, he's supposed to calm me down. <laughs> yeah. So, so no, because it's true. Because sometimes I'll be really mad, and then I'll pick up my kids. And I'm like, I can't be that mad. Yeah, yeah. So he, yeah, he's supposed to. He's like a like a like a 
Sub- emotional support animal. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah, like you one calm of those me really, down. One of those what do they call those furry birds? What do they yeah, call furry them? Furry birds. Yeah. Any, anytime you're pissed, you just hear one time at governor's. You know? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Whenever he shows up, whenever he shows up, I'm like, I, I'm kind of relieved because when you follow, when you go to governor's, you always have to follow fat comics. Like, Sorry. no offense, but yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not talking about your fat level. I'm talking about fat. Yeah. So it's everybody on Long Island is fat. That's just a given. And everybody in the audience is fat. I'm anti-fat, you know, like I do. <laughs> I do anti-fat jokes. That's my LGBTQ, like I'm <laughs> with Dave Chappelle. And that's my fingering the rat with a Louis C.K. Yeah, like yeah. I'm obsessed. With, I'm obsessed with fat people. So I can't I can't do well <laughs> if I follow a fat person. So so when he shows up. I feel better because he, but then I can't even follow him because he, he does all the little uh, uh, Mickey Mouse jokes, right? Yep. That's your still your closer. Oh no, no, I close with the airport. I close with all. <laughs> of them. I hate everybody equally. No, but New Year's Eve it was him. So Bob what? Levy. I hate everybody equally is a very Long Island premise. That's like yeah. no, you don't understand. I yeah. Don't, yeah, yeah. No, so it was him. New Year's Eve was him, Bob Levy, and Eleanor Carrigan. So was it? Yeah, it was where New Year's Eve, the brokerage. So I just no, was that New Year's Eve? New Year's Eve, was it? Yeah. All right. So I says to James, I said, James, come on, I want to do it with them. You know, I know all three of them. It's all right, all right, do whatever the hell you want to do, just show up. Well, but don't you need to ask them? Ask who? Oh, do go there and do a good job. But I gotta tell you, he started me. Four years ago. With That's five. how Rickles used to talk. Rickles, I if you watch any YouTube of Rickles, he's always like, you know, Johnny Carson, he started me on his show yeah, 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 like yeah, 12 yeah. years ago yeah. when he's talking about uh, No, but he started me with five minutes, and now I'm like up to 25, and like, I'm really super impressed that. You're impressed with your own act? Well, I'm impressed <laughs> that I'm able to go up there and do 25 minutes. I'm gonna, when I leave here, I'm going to spend three hours diving through this guy's Instagram. <laughs> Like that's gonna be my whole day. You never did governors? No. Uh, he he's I've met that guy a couple times. He's like, We gotta get you down here. And I'm like, All right. And uh, you know, and it never where do you see him? He would like sh- you know, he shows up to like one of his comics, does a show here or something. Oh right. You know? He he manages he manages a lot of these ladies, right? I don't know if he manages them or he helps You know, he tries to help them out. I think yeah. he's I think he thinks uh uh women are the future in comedy. Well, I don't know. But if can it's... we be, can we yeah, what do you think? You have you had sex <laughs> you with a the... lot of women comics? Uh only a, a couple of comics. Five or less? Yeah, five or less. And 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 after you have sex with them, do you date them or you just have sex with them? Um I dated a couple and uh I think there was only like two like one night stands. And then, and then, do you look at them differently after you have sex with them? Like, do, are you become fans of their comedy or vice versa? No, I, I, it doesn't affect that. But I tell you know the young comics coming up, like, don't fuck comics. It's just you don't you don't want relationships to get weird with people. Like you you know you see them again at the fucking clubs. Like you and Sarah Silverman, that's got to be like an awkward. <laughs> <laughs> are you my wife? My wife goes. My wife goes. My wife goes. She goes. One time she got mad. Uh, something about Sarah. She goes, I know. Listen, I my first the first guy I had sex with, it, it would it, like if I still saw him, that would be like really weird yeah. for me because the first guy you have sex with is like a big deal. I go, I go. First of all, it's not weird. Nobody cares. I don't care if she cares. I don't think she does. Right, right. So, uh, and it was so long ago. It was like it was it was like twenty lives ago. You yeah. know. So you I fucked can't... her before Jimmy Kimmel or after Jimmy Kimmel? Right after. Right at the day after. <laughs> the day after. That's how we wanted it. I mean, that's that's the saddest part where people go like... I mean, it, it's like the fact that Sarah uses her vagina... I thought you were over like, it. Now she's like... She's like <laughs> no, it's like, you know, when I was a kid, everybody would go to... Uh, uh, we would visit, like, we, we grew up in Philadelphia... So it would be like George Washington slept here. It was like he slept a lot of places. And I was like, and I was like, he's a fucking, he's a real pimp, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but the point is, it's like, so the Sarah uses her vagina like that, like so and so slept here, and that's weird, right? Isn't that weird? <laughs> I don't think she's the one talking about it. 
No, I'm, no, I'm saying, no, that's what I'm saying. I don't, she don't, I, I, I didn't care then. Yeah, I didn't yeah, care yeah. then. Like, I, I like, for some reason, I, some things don't affect me at all. Like when Sarah got like better known, it's still, it's still, I was never impressed with it. I was never impressed <laughs> with me fucking or, or her success. Right. Right. Like a lot of times I'm just not impressed with stuff just cause I'm not, you know, but I was yeah. thinking like, you're, everybody was talking about you, like you're the hottest guy. And then, uh. So I'm thinking months, you know, and also every female comic has a has a boyfriend now that's a comic. I mean, they like literally every one of them. You think so? Yeah, it's not a thinking. It's not a feeling. It's a fact. I fucking relax. Like, like I don't know a lot of chicks who are dating. I don't know a lot of women in comedy who can hold a boyfriend, honestly. No, but they but most of them, most of them have a have a boyfriend. Most of them have a boyfriend that's a comic. Yeah, or a booker. Because they know if they're booking clubs. Who's, who's dating a booker? A few comics, I Name know. Name them. Oh, come on. You want me to put people on the spot? That's what the episode That's is That's the called. whole show. <laughs> well, there's a couple like Natalie. No, I don't want you. I don't want you to say anything interesting. Yeah, don't. Who? Natalie who, Cuomo. Who's she dating? Uh, a she, booker? I think she was dating a booker. She, she was dating Luis Gomez. He books his podcast. Yeah, no, but she was dating somebody. But a few other comics were dating, like, uh, who? I don't know who I per se, but I know a lot of people. Right, but I don't think it's that they're trying to get ahead. It's just that's who's around. No, they're it's trying like, to get ahead. Absolutely, they're trying to get dude, ahead. Cu- Cuomo is like she's she's no, a but it's good not kid. Just... She's got like a hundred thousand fucking followers. She doesn't need anybody's help. She's no, like... no, no. I'm not just talking about Cuomo. I'm talking about. In general. You're talking about Mario Cuomo? No. <laughs> the way he says He's going to tear down the poster of him in his house. No, I, I'm talking about in general. A lot of these younger female comics will go after somebody like a comic like you or him who has that power that could possibly take them to the next level. They have, listen, it's built into their DNA. They have a vagina. Let's use it for good. Yeah. <laughs> so, so why not fuck somebody that can help me a little bit? It's like... It's like you're they're gonna fuck somebody. So why not yeah. fuck somebody that maybe is a good comic, maybe can help me? Who knows? Well, I mean, but fucking Joe List wife, she's in the Joe List movie now because she's, she's not gonna playing be playing the long game. That's she's not saying. gonna be in Joe List movie if she's not married to Joe List. That's a fact. That's what? just a fact. I mean, you you can debate it, but that's a fact. Yeah. It's like the saddest part, the saddest thing I ever saw, Sam Roberts. Is that his name from Jim and Sam? Yeah. He was talking about Judd Apatow was on his show and this is like not even that long ago, but he was talking about how he goes, well, your kids are doing really good in business in the, in showbiz. Are you worried about them? Like going forward with the, whatever, whatever the topic was. I'm like, they're doing good in the business because their dad was doing good in the business. They wouldn't, they wouldn't even be in the business if their dad wasn't in the business. So the fact that like people are like, oh, well, no, they're no, they're good actors. It's like, what? Right, right. I mean, that's that's the sad part is you have to yeah, constantly, you have to constantly just... pretend. No, the fact that like every female comic is dating a comic who's better at comedy than them, not even better. They, that's just what they do. I mean, my wife will say, well, that's that's who that's who they're working with. That's that's what I think. It's it's like that's who you're around. You want to date the fucking best dude in your office, the best looking or the most talented. Right. So I think I think it's more that I think. Comics can't really help you that much nowadays, and everybody knows that. Like, if you're dating a fucking comic who's funnier than you, like, what are they gonna do? Give you a couple road spots opening for them? Like, what, you know, what what doors can they really fucking open? You should try showing a little ass, trying to get a little, <laughs> you know, get some of that book and put. I just think that I just think, listen. I, I'm not saying it's wrong or right, but that's that's what it is. You know, it's like when I was. I mean, there was less female comics then, but I guess my point is, it's like, are female comics good? We cut to an ad. <laughs> but I think that's no, I'm what saying, I'm saying. I'm saying like, like, uh, there's, there's some very funny female comics. Okay. Okay. Jessica Kirsten, throw her out. Jessica and then Kirsten. Who do we have Bonnie left? McFarlane. I really, okay, really love. Bonnie's good. Um, I don't want to piss off your wife, but Sarah Silverman has, has had her moments. Okay. She's been funny. But I'm saying, I don't even know what my point is. I feel like I'm, tr- I was going <laughs> to make a point. You're trying to bait me into fucking my <laughs> shit up. That's your point. <laughs> No, I guess my point is that, like, uh, when you date, I I know there's more female comics now for whatever reason, probably because there's more women in the audience. and There's and, more everybody. Yeah, but but I just think, like, it seems like women are, like, supporting comedy kind of, and they they make their own money, so they're like. But that's who goes to comedy clubs. No, I know. So so you have they, to. You men have to, don't want to go out. 
Huh? Men don't want to go out. Yeah, that's a good point. Like, Men that's don't want to go out. Yeah. Women, like, we're happy to sit at home on our fucking couch. Chicks are like, let's get dressed up. Let's go see a show before right. we go out. Why do like, women want to get dressed up? Because they're, they're whores, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> they're also, like they're your out. wife, she takes care <laughs> just of your kids. trying to make Kevin happy. <laughs> like he's going like to give I'm you a treat. A I drink. feel like I'm Larry King now. I'm only like, here because he's why, do they, uh, why yes. do they get dressed up? Because they're uh, whores, Larry. For the full hour. <laughs> I'm only here because Kevin said I'd be working with somebody who's 100 pounds. I got excited. <laughs> a 50 year old, 12 year old. I'm not even, I, I just think that it's like, because I'm now I'm curious what you think. You're younger, yeah. but you're right. That you're a hundred percent right. Women want to go out, and it's kind of ruining comedy because <laughs> I thought, I thought no, you because, were gonna like hit something positive there. No, because it's like they go out and they and they're not they're not used to jokes. They don't really like jokes. Yeah. Well, they're, certain crowds, like the 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 girl podcasting crowds, are the worst stand up comedy audience. They are because they like a lot of comics won't even like go up in front of them anymore because they're like I don't want to fucking just have an awful time up there. But like, but it's. It, it, to me, I don't even get mad at those chick podcasters who are like doing stand up because like it's not their fault. They don't like they didn't choose their audience. They, they're just trying to make ends meet. They're doing a show. They're trying to get good at stand up. They can't like if they sell out a place on uh, like just by being there. How do you get mad at them for that? You know, no, what I, mean? I never get mad at people for selling tickets. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't care. And I don't like care yesterday, what you have to do. Yesterday, I did a show. There was like two influencers that are like new to comedy, very new to comedy. They're like, you know, they're not. In any other scenario, they'd never be working a club. Yeah. But they have huge followings. Yeah. So they're on stage and like, you know, they're learning their shit, whatever. I don't fault them at all. But they're selling the room out. So they're giving, you know, I can't fucking sell a room out just by being on it on a lineup. So they're giving you an audience to perform for. It's like a fucking give and take, you know, gives you a sold out room and it was a fucking hot show. Well, you're right, though, because I, I, that's a good point. Women have their own money and they want to go out and guys don't want to go out. Yeah. I'm Especially happy to spend... younger guys, because younger guys, they, they'd rather go, they'd rather like gamble like on video their phone. games and shit. Yeah. yeah they'd rather just, just stay home and be on. Cause I'm like that. I just thought, cause I'm old and I don't want to go out. Cause I'm, I have to go out when I work. So yeah, I don't yeah. want to go out when I don't work. My wife's always like, she's always complaining. So, so, <laughs> but no, she complains. I don't take her out. She goes, you don't take me out as much as you used to. I'm like, you don't look as good as you used to. That's what I tell her. <laughs> But anyway, the point is that uh, the point is that you gotta uh, take the mouth. That's the way. Life- no, the point is he's right. That's why I like love because he says a lot of stuff that's true. Women go out, so we're at the mercy of this, and then and then I go up and I kind of I try to take shots at them because I can't I can't stand the fact that they're like they don't understand like the like comedy is like. You you have to make you have to get the crowd to laugh. So. You could still do it, but it, it it's harder to do it. Like I've noticed, I have a joke that's like pretty women positive. It's like I can feel in the punchline; it makes the the chicks applaud at it. But most of my other jokes are like you know, it's I do guy comedy for the most part. Yeah, but like I've noticed jokes like that, they're they're getting more now. Those like female positive jokes because like. There's more of them in the crowd. They Wait, you're just kind of writing them without thinking about it? Yeah, think? just coincidentally. Right, coinc- right. Like no, I would, you're, your subconscious is like, well, this is what we need, you know? Well, I think like if you want to do the fucking four jokes about how women stink, just do the one about how they don't up front. And that's it, you know? Like, you, you, I mean, you obviously know this shit, but like, it's harder to do it, but you can, you know, you can, like Schultz, Schultz fucking trashes women consistently. He, but he, you know, he's getting fucking cracking theaters open doing it. So there's still a way to do it. Yeah, but it. he's also appealing to guys mostly, you know. And then yeah. the women think he's cool or whatever because he's he's super confident. But I'm just saying, like my myself, I was like, "What's going on?" Then I I thought it was just the seller, but then uh, but it's then, New York, it's New York club. No, but it's like it's kind of it's kind of like more everywhere. I think when you go on the road, like like regular towns, it's more like men and women on dates. But but yeah. but in New York, it's like a lot of women, and then uh. Yeah, so they they want um clubs have changed. It, like it used to be much more comedy fans. Now it's it's 20% comedy fans, maybe even 10%. Certain shows like Legion of Skanks and all those guys will bring in like heavy comedy crowds. Like Bill Burr will bring in a heavy comedy crowd. But like for the most part, on an average night a club is like 80% chicks who want to go out and they brought a dude. Like or they're drinking with their girlfriends before they go fucking yeah. clubbing. Like that's a weekend at a yeah. comedy club now. 
So I'm fucked. So I don't care. <laughs> no, I don't care. I'm fucked, but I don't care. But because the thing is, I, I'm like ready to fucking whatever. But the point you is, you just did that, my fucking short, dude. You, you're gonna have a resurgence. No. Oh yeah. No, but but no. I think you're right. I think you're right that like guys don't want to go out. So yeah. then they so so and then the guy and then the women. Even if the guy's there with a woman, uh, the woman's kind of like it was her idea. And then so he has to kind of play. In the old days, it was like the guy wanted to go, right, right. And then he would bring his girlfriend, and so he was like really into comedy. Where now he's like more like a passive observer of of uh, the stand up show. Yeah. So I have to like I have to dance around that. Like I do jokes that that like I say women don't like jokes, right, right. as much as guys do. And I and and then they get mad. I said that's what HR is for because women can't take a fucking joke, you know. So. So and then they don't take that joke. But here's the thing, like Kevin, you do a style of comedy that's that's like a dinosaur. No, Jura- Jurassic <laughs> but, Park. No, you do a style of comedy that is is not going to be liked by everyone, right? Or anyone. <laughs> You're right. So you you have to accept like this is what no, I don't. I have to accept anything. No, I have to accept him. <laughs> Like, we, we, I like how he slams the table. What does that do? When it, do you hear it's the? It's not e- good. Do yeah. You hear the echo? Yeah. You slammed it twenty You're... times before talking about Sarah Silverman. What? You're you like... guys act like Sarah Silverman's hot. I mean, listen. That, oh, that's come the... on. She's got giant Jew tits. Yeah, they're fucking veiny as fuck, dude. There's nothing wrong. They with look the like vein. my dick. <laughs> my dick has less veins than her fucking. I mean, they were new when I saw them, so <laughs> they just got they just gotten grown. Yeah, no, she's a beautiful, they, she's a beautiful woman. Come on, for Kevin. a comic, I guess. But listen, I'll take you to know. Flash. I'll take you to any strip club, and and they're all better looking than Sarah Silverman. It'd she just fun. did that movie, "Marry Me," with uh, Jennifer Lopez. It came out in February, March, April. You April. think I saw that movie? <laughs> if you're a fan of hers, well, I am not a fan of hers. I fucked her and I dumped her. I dumped her. <laughs> <laughs> 40 years I'm ago. I'm a fan of hers. No. Yeah, I'm a fan. I'm a big fan. I got Sarah Silverman posters on my fucking kid's wall. They're fans, too. We're all fans. Kevin. She stinks. <laughs> How did she, she get pissed? Passed at what? All these clubs. And- she wasn't even passed at the cellar. She got SNL. She wasn't even passed at the cellar. I don't think she was passed at the cellar. She was working at, at Stan, it- I mean, at uh, Boston Comedy, mostly. I don't even know how that happened. It was a fucking freak of nature. I remember if you she, saw I remember her, I you'd be happy to, to see her, right? You'd be like, it's good to see you. No, I just laugh because she's such a cunt. Yeah. The last time I saw her, she she had like 10 minutes of abortion jokes. Okay. And I was like, this is this is like, it's not even funny. It's just, it's like, she's famous. They, it's a mental illness. Being famous, it creates mental illness. I so mean, then, yeah, so of then, course. So then you're just, you're just like, oh, no one will stop me. I can sit, talk about whatever I want. And the crowd's mostly first of all, if you're Sarah Silverman, they're not gonna they're not gonna heckle you because you know, they, they know you're kind of famous, even if they, even if they don't agree with you, they're too intimidated, yeah. you know. But I'll say like the point I was trying to make is like if you do a kind of comedy that's not for everybody, you can't be shocked when like people don't respond to it. Like I do school shooting jokes and shit like that. I'll do it on the day of a shooting. If the crowd goes, oh, fuck that. Like, I'm not going to be like, you guys are idiots. Like, I'm not going to be shocked. Like, yeah. All right. You know, I got it's up. It's up to you. It's yeah, up but to... why would you do a joke about school shooting? Because it's something so severe. I mean, I'm not woke. I'm not canceled. No, that's woke talk. No, it's not woke talk. But it's like if a school shooting <laughs> and you're doing a school shooting joke, it's like it's like uh, Louis C.K. We we're talking about him before he did that joke. And one of the fathers of this, uh, the uh, what was that? Parkland. No, not Parkland. The one um, in Lo- New Jersey. No, Sandy Hook. Sandy Hook. Yeah. Sandy Hook. The father was at the show for some reason, and it, he stood up in the middle of the act and said, I want to take you outside. My son got killed in that. And he's like, Where'd that happen? At Governor's, because he did the, the fatty joke, did the fatty uh, for the uh. fat kid behind the car or something. And some people are not happy about that. Yeah, but that's that you can't fault them. For like reacting the way they're gonna react to yeah, I didn't like that though. joke anyway. I, I I didn't tell Louie not to do it, but I told I told everybody. I, I like that I, joke, huh? I like that joke. No, I when I saw it, I remember I told his 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 not his manager, but his assistant. We were in a car back. I go, that's a he's not, he's not gonna win with that joke. Yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah. It's just it was a no win situation. I know I did a joke after the school shooting in uh, Texas, you know, and I said, uh, 
and I was trying to do stuff, and the crowd they didn't they didn't want to hear. And then, no, and then, yeah. So I was complaining to Mike Birbiglia. I go, I go, I'm just fucking bombing because I had like I was for a couple of days I was just bombing, you know. And he goes, I said, yeah, I'm trying to do I'm doing a joke about school shootings. He goes, what's the joke? I said, well, you know they have drug free school zones. Why don't they have murder free school zones? And he goes. Because that's like a Dennis Miller take in 1987. <laughs> oh, I go, I, I know, I know. Yeah. I go, yeah, I go, I, I go. First I, sound drop an hour and a half <laughs> in <laughs> on this fucking show. But we, I, I didn't know we even had that I going. Mean... <laughs> no, but like you reach a point where you're like, you just want to talk about it because it's just like, it's like little, literally the elephant in the room. It just happened. It happened like on a Tuesday or Wednesday and I was doing shows on Friday. So I have kids at that age, so I'm not gonna like not talk about it. Yeah. Again, you have to pander to the fucking but crowd. But have you have you started a joke like that? Like I have kids and I'm fucking afraid of. No, yeah, no. But I'm saying they don't listen. Here's the problem with stand up comedy and and women. Women are used to being. <laughs> women are used to being pan lev. <laughs> women are used to being pandered to. They're used to being pandered to. When you go up to a woman at a bar, you're not like. What the fuck are you wearing? You're like, oh my God, you look so cute in that. Yeah. Oh my God. So they're used to being pandered in general. And now now it's at a comedy club. They're used to they're used to now they have jobs. They're used to being kind of pandered at their job where you don't say any things that are unpleasant. And then and then every other comic is kind of pandering to the crowd. So I so I'm basically like, what what do you want me to do? But so, but but okay. No, so, so even if that's is, all true, yeah, my, my yeah. Just, my only point is, it's exhausting being me, because I I'm like when I was younger, I would I was more I was more willing to play ball. As right, I got right. older, I don't I don't give a fuck. Like I don't I'm not I don't like somebody was saying about like uh, Brandon Schaub doing a stand up. Like the fact that this guy who used to be an MMA guy is now prancing around the stage looking for crowd approval is gay is gay <laughs> it's fun i think tim dillard said it, and he's supposedly gay yeah, yeah, he's yeah. i think he's fake gay <laughs> but he's supposedly gay so so and it is gay like to to every night looking for crowd approval is gay yeah it's it's just like do you like my outfit so so i get sick of like that that mentality where like i'm constantly need crowd approval Right. Because it's just it's gay, and I and I'm, right. I'm a man now. I have a family. I have responsibility. So I think there's like something where like where you where you're. Con it's like being a politician, and you never stop pandering as a politician. Where you just like, well, you guys never grow. You guys never grow a fucking backbone. Even after the school shooting, you never go like that is fucked up. You're like, no, I think it's a mental illness issue. It's like this was. It's like you guys, you could, you don't get sick of like pandering. So I'm sick of pandering. So I see these young women, but nobody's telling I do you wanna, to pander. No, the crowd is. The crowd is, and the other comics and the MC. You guys ready for this guy? Yeah. You ready for this next guy? He's gonna be a super panderer. This guy brought me up last night. He goes the first show. He goes, can you? He goes, this guy's a beast. I go up there. I'm wearing a fucking windbreaker. <laughs> I don't think a beast has ever wore a windbreaker, <laughs> ever. So I second show. I go, can you not say I'm a beast? <laughs> Can you please not say I'm a beast? Yeah. Because they're, they're fucking Atlantic City crowd. They're dragged in off the fucking boardwalk. They don't even know there's going to be beasts at the show. <laughs> so, uh, so, and then they bring me up. I'm like, I'm like, I'm not a beast. Yeah. Like, I'm not a beast. So, and, and also, like, Sam Kinison, as great as he was, he was still talking about relationships mostly in his stand up. So it's like, you got to fucking talk about what they want to talk about. That's what they want. They, they're there on a date. They're there. Women. Now women are like, yeah, women. Like now I'm going, there are a lot of women here, right? Women are going to, women are taking over. Right. And then they clap like dumb cunts. And then, uh, and then I go in for the kill. No, I mean, I have to like soft, I have yeah. to soft. But there's a lot the of jokes. Good, there, it's not even, it, it's not it's like, it's not soft selling. It's like you're disguising. That's the yeah, thing. Like the good, okay. the good guys coming up, like like Column, me, like Shane, like those. None of those guys do the pandering. None of them do the bullshitting. Like they don't do it in the act. They just they do what they do with like a very tactful way. It's harder to do it, but like that's the only. What can you do? It's either adapt or die. Like you either fucking right. put more finesse on it, or you stop doing stand up, right. or you do the fucking brokerage every weekend, or whatever right. the fuck, like well, or a Long Island room, like where those. Yeah, but even rooms, then, you have to kind of like. That's why I kind of learned Atlantic City this week, and I'm like, because these people are just fucking animals, yeah. you know. And and I still was like, 
Well, they don't like it either. Like I, I basically have to like, you know, I have to just kind of soft, soft sell. Cause I don't really want to soft sell it. So I have to kind of dance around like what I'm going to, you know, yeah. that disguise a joke, but I have to basically like soft my, soften my approach before I do the joke. Yeah. They know? took me like a, a shooting bit that I do. It took me a long time to even get it to work because just the first two sentences I said would make the crowd pull back. But yeah. when you like disguise the wording, like instead, like you blame it on a, on somebody else, like you have to trick the way to get them in, you know? It's harder. It's I hard. Like, I feel like uh, we're we're like a gay couple, and this is our son. <laughs> no, but I do. I like would shoot myself. On stage, um, where I go, you guys like the hair tonight, and they all are cheering up. Do I need to approve them? No, but sometimes it's nice, you know. And and then I'll go, yeah, you could get this too, because I'll pick out a bald guy and go, you could get this too, cha 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 cha, and they laugh. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, first of all, why don't you do something like that, Kevin? <laughs> oh my God. First of all, Mario, Mario, we love you and everything. That but is like, so wholesome. Crowds can't it. get mad at you. You could, you could yeah. talk about like killing people's mother. It'd and be they, really uh, funny if you were like the most dark comic yeah, ever. Yeah, no, they they can't get so mad at you. Fucking in the ass, <laughs> blood everywhere. <laughs> they can't get mad at you. It's like it's also like. They they take in the whole package, so you could you could literally say whatever you want, and they can't get mad at you. I said some guy last night. I was talking about COVID, and and some guy goes, some woman goes, it's a it's a it's the flu, and I was like, ah, okay, well I'm almost done, so I really want to debate it. So I go, you. She goes, I'm a nurse. I go, what? Well, like a hand job nurse, and uh, her husband got all mad at me, you know. So I'm the opposite of you. Like people get mad at me so quick. <laughs> Like, like, that's why I don't fuck with guys too much on stage because they like literally. I I put off a vibe like I want to fight. I I guess I I don't know, but I don't. Yeah. But like when I'm on stage, I guess the like adrenaline and I'm fucking. I'm you know I feel like I'm a fucking. Uh, I have a, my back against the wall mentality, so it's like fight or flight. So I'm like I'll fight, but as soon as I get off stage, I, I'm like I go right from my car. Right, right, right. Because like once the shows are, I'm like I'm a, I'm the fuck out of here. But you could you could say whatever you want. I don't know what your end game is. I, I think I don't know when you're. <laughs> what do you think your end game is? Like you're fifty, man. That's so crazy what to me. Fuck? What does that mean? Fifty. Fifty's just a number. I'm asking. No, it's not a number. <laughs> yeah, it's a number. It's a high number. It's a high number. Fit, you're like that's not that's that's crazy to me that you're fifty. Like you don't look fifty, but like but it's crazy to me that you're fifty. No, I want you to be a fucking giant success. I hope so. But I'm saying, like, you I don't... just labeled me as a Long Island comic, which I'm not. You know, you did. Yeah, he said. Did well, I step out for a second? Did I? How did I miss? That? He said. No, he goes, I didn't. Well, he goes, if you just want to be a Long Island comic, no, I wasn't. Play the brokerage. I wasn't talking about you. I was talking about like if 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 you're yeah. a comic and you just want easy crowds that'll let you get away with way more. And yeah, not no. they don't the want the Long Island crowds. They want simple jokes. No. They want fat jokes. They want no. fat jokes is what they want. Like yeah. they, they, everybody's fat. They all hate New York. They, you can't right. talk. You can't talk about New York. So you can't talk about Biden. You can't say you hate Trump because they'll fucking they'll torture you. Yeah, that's you. fine. I don't care about that. But like when, when you if I follow a fat guy out there, I know I'm I know I'm gonna have a bad show. Because but Kevin, they, you've been doing stand up for fucking fifty years. You can't follow a fat comic. No, no, <laughs> no. That's crazy. It is crazy. I, I think the same thing on my way home, thinking that's crazy. <laughs> I, I, uh, yeah, no, cause fat, you didn't hit the thing about fat jokes. It's like, they're easy. The crowds get them cause they, they're looking at the fat guy and then he does a fat joke yeah. and the joke, the joke, they're basically writing themselves. And the they are the line, easiest jokes to write. Yeah. The punchline, the punchlines write themselves and, and the visually you're right there. It's like Mario talking about what he looks like. He does fucking Mickey mouse jokes. That's right. How he fingers them like Lucy. Do you, do you do any dirty stuff, Mario? I do. Yeah. I do. I How's them. it get dirty with you? You know, I tell my mother, dicker. my mother fucked Mickey Mouse to have me or, you know, um, I don't talk <laughs> about like positions and sex and stuff. But I think I should open it up. Because Kevin's little. looking for a small comic to open for him. He's having trouble <laughs> with the bigger guys. Why is small comic? Oh, size and small? And stature? Yeah, yeah. Or, or a, Mario, this is none of my business and you tell me to go fuck off. But, but, no. but you've had, you've had like... Uh, I can't even ask. Adam, ask. I mean, him. I I know some of this. We've talked about it. What he's no. had? Sex you talking with... about like ladies? Yeah. I, I don't know that he has much of a libido. No. 
You're not so much interested. Not at all. I'm not gay, but right. I'm not, not against gay people, but it doesn't bother me. Yeah, I mean, when I was 12, I was jerking off fucking 15 times a day. You were? Yeah. Yeah, but. Okay, let me ask that because my you. son is coming to that, to that age. Like, you jerked off like all the time? I think the average for a kid that age is like three to five times a day. Yeah. What? Yeah. Well, 12, we also, 14. I, I grew up with internet porn by the time I was like six. Yeah, but where, where do you jerk off? Usually in your car. No, I'm like a family car? <laughs> no, like <laughs> at home. home. What, what like do you the mean? Brennan vehicle? No, but where? Like in the shower? <laughs> uh, Anywhere. Fuck it. Yeah. I, all, your house has been jerked off in every single sittable place, dude. Yeah, but we didn't jerk off. Our fa- our, we weren't allowed to jerk off. What do you mean you weren't we allowed? We had no privacy. We had too many kids. Yeah. So I you just didn't start... jerk off? No. Ooh, in the shower? You never jerked off in the shower? Not too much. I had a libido. <laughs> <laughs> Your libido now was in I'm your fucking mouth. Loud. Now I'm fucking getting even. Now I'm, I'm still fucking my wife. Oh, good. Yeah. Somebody has to. But uh, <laughs> well, wait, you would You're just jerk off? You would just, the milkman. Wait, you would just jerk off? A lot, yeah. And then you had a brother? I love how you're shocked by this. You open for Louie. You don't get the concept of jerking off? No, but not a lot. Like, I get the concept of jerking off, but... but, but what would as... you do if you caught... Sorry to die. What would you do if you caught... You walked in and your son's beating his meat and you see him in the room are you gonna be like hey we don't do that and don't get it on the, the bread spread you know the bed spread or you're gonna be like let him do what he wants to do i probably i probably i don't know what i would do that's a good question mario i think i would be like who uh, like first of all i would probably i don't know so you I would don't know. stop him to ask him who what when and where he's in the moment if they're like in their room i think you just go my bad and then, you know, that's and, it. and you would just sit in your bed and you'd be under your covers jerking off. Why are you so? Yeah, I, mean, I, 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 I can back you up on this. I'm I'm older than you, but and I didn't have Internet porn. But yeah, I mean, once you learn about it, yeah. once you learn that that that's a thing. Yeah, you don't stop. I mean, it's three, four times a day till it hurts. Yeah, I was shooting blanks up until mm-hmm. like 14 or 15. Just yep. fucking. Just, Wait, you were jerking off a shooting blanks? Yeah, yeah, for like but how'd the you first even nine know, years. How'd you even know what you were doing? You're still orgasming. You're just not coming. Yeah, but what? The, yeah, yeah, the two are separate. As a doctor? Wait, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, Medically, wait. they're separate. So wait, you can jerk off when you're ten, and you don't you don't come. Yeah, you don't come. How do you know you when do you're done? Orgasm, because you fucking orgasm. But it's the same exact thing. It's just it, you're not shooting come out. What are you shooting? Nothing. Nothing. And then you would keep doing it. You, you never smoke jerked a off as a kid. It's like not not with no cum. That's young. How how young are you? Talking? Kevin never jerked off without somebody else's cum. <laughs> if I jerk off, someone's coming. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I'm trying to, I'm trying to Adam, think. I'm trying Adam, to think. Who dunk. taught you how to? Who taught you how to jerk off? My uncle. He did. No. What? The, what are you fucking? <laughs> so you just started whacking your dick. You started. Yeah. You figure it out. You and how old it? was it? How? What? What was year? I mean, what I year? Six when six? I was g- going at it. Yeah. No, you weren't. That was okay. starting my. I career. think I was six too. Like I was in the hospital. What year? What doing... year? So you're looking at porn on your phone? The I I must have been. No, I was on like the family computer. You just like that at that time there was like pop ups and shit. You'd accidentally mm-hmm. hit like a porn site. And then you were at what age? Not six, though, right? I was probably like around there, like six, seven. And you would just six. grab your dick because your dick would get hard, and you well, rub it. Well, I didn't it? start regularly, like, like fi- finding out what porn is till I was probably like ten, eleven, something like that. Dude, a kid today has an iPhone. Like, you're gonna fucking. Well, my sister. I don't want to say which one, but my sister's apparently. She says, uh, she goes, my. She didn't tell me. She told my wife when they went to their house down at the shore. She goes. Uh, yeah, he takes like three, four showers a day. Oh, you know? yeah, yeah. So he's in there whacking it? Probably, yeah. yeah. But well, you don't have a phone, right? But you're just going right from your phone well, to the... Well, the phones are waterproof now. Waterproof. <laughs> yeah, but but you don't need the phone. You just you have the image in your head. You jerk off to it. But you really need to jerk off that many times? Dude, you're like... You're fucking... It's like Louis says. It's like you're sexually exploding at that age. Like, that's... Your body is going fucking crazy at that point. Because, like, and, and your body is still wired to be, like, you die at 30. So by 13, you're ready to, like, have kids. And, like, that's what you did in the biblical fucking in time. So... See, I think at, like, your age, 25, any hot girl you would see, they're like, hey, you want to, you know, do it? And you're like, yeah, fuck it. Let's go blow me, you know? He would probably be more, hey... 
uh, I'm I don't really well I'm I'm into a serious relationship. I want something more. <laughs> yeah. He would be like, "Fuck it, I got no time for you." And what are you me, talking like, about? What are you come. talking about? <laughs> Mario, did you jerk off when you were a kid? Yeah. You're still a kid, but do you do you jerk off a lot? Yeah, when you're a kid, you do all kinds of crazy shit like that because your body and your hormones or whatever you're you're experiencing that that. When you jerk off now, do you do you you come or you don't come? No, I told you that last time, and you still ask. No, what do you mean you don't come? I don't come. Or you don't do it, or you don't climax. What do you mean climax? Like do you? Oh, you, you orgasm, jerk off? but you're not yeah. coming. You're not. Okay. It, Blanks. Yeah. Really? Wait, nothing comes out, so nothing's ever come out of your dick. What do you dick. think it is? A slot machine? But no, <laughs> you've never had an orgasm? Like a like a jism? You've never had jism on your finger? No. Really? For your whole life, you never had a, you never had like, what do you call it? Semen? Yeah. <laughs> what do you call it? It's a medical show. <laughs> yeah. You've never get... had semen on your finger? <sighs> no. Wow. I, I wow, this is crazy. So you've been you've been whacking it forever. We're polar opposites, like I said. In and every and, way. and you've never had semen come out of your thing. You ever have a wet dream and you wake up, you got fucking jism on your shorts? No. Have you ever had semen come out of a different hole? No. Oh no! <laughs> I don't know. His life. Now we're doing the Legion of Skank. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I listen. This is why I have my show. I guess this is not why I have my show at all. But, but uh, why do you have your show? One of the reasons is is because <laughs> I I didn't know I didn't know people I, I I didn't know people were so weird. Like I didn't know I didn't I did not know people were so weird. You have fucking twenty eight <laughs> brothers and sisters, three on Netflix, and you didn't know they're fucking. No, weird. I didn't know people were like I didn't like we were talking at the beginning of the show about Lenny and fucking yeah. like I didn't know people. I didn't think people had the capacity. To be as weird as they are, I, I didn't think when I when I started to, like I knew Lenny, I, like me and Lenny were friends. I had no idea people had the capacity to be that weird and well, to Lenny think Bruce. to think it wasn't weird. Yeah, yeah, Lenny Bruce to think it was to th like Lenny would do shit. I was like, "Wait, you think this is like no one's ever told you what a fucking loser? Like what?" <laughs> So, so when you're jerking, like, I can't imagine jerking off. I could see jerking off maybe once a day, but three, four times a day. Yeah. Like, but did you have any, you had a brother, right? Yeah. I had an older brother. And that's it? Yeah. Just the two of us. And then was he jerking off? Did you guys ever jerk off together? No. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the Legion of Skanks guy. <laughs> Is your brother still with us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you said, he said you no, were yeah. No, but, so wait, so. All he's right, like, so like so you just jerked off, and nobody <laughs> nobody told you, and then and then uh, you just kept jerking off. Yeah. All right, good. All right, good. <laughs> well, you say it like that, no, and you just kept jerking no, off. No, because it's fucking crazy. So yeah, if I walk in, my son's jerking off. I, that's what I'll say. And I go, how many was how many times have You're you jerked off today? You're supposed to ask that kid well, how many times you jerked off today. No, that's what I'm gonna ask him. If he jerk off once, that's fine. But if you're jerking off like this fucking piece no, of they shit, grow three, out four, of it. you grow, huh? you grow yeah. out of it. Yeah. It tapers when? off. It when? tapers I off. I actually do know, like, some of my friends are, like, fucking, you know, they're crushing life, but they still, like, they'll jerk off three times mm -hmm. a day if they're left to their own devices. No, they're not. I swear to you, dude. Okay. Well, I know. I, I tell you used to brag about how much he would jerk off. He said he would jerk off so much. That is when we were, like, starting out in comedy. Yeah. He said he'd jerk off so much, like, blood would come out instead of semen. Whoa. So, yeah. I'm wow. like, that's, how, that's probably too, isn't that a warning sign? <laughs> When you're fucking jizzing blood, yeah. like isn't your dick it's a trying warning to sign that you're fucking sick? Dude. Isn't, isn't yeah. your dick trying to tell you something? Like, yeah. please stop. Yeah, I know right. I can't. I, I know I can't make you stop, but please stop. This is blood. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. It was like it was like fucking Daryl Strawberry uh -huh. uh, when he was he was shitting blood, and he goes, "I'll look into this after the season." Another good decision from Daryl <laughs> Strawberry. He turned out he had he had colon cancer, prostate cancer. But he was like, he was shitting blood during the season. He's like, let me, I'll get this checked after the fucking, after the playoffs. Yeah. Get it checked now. Your body's trying to tell you like, hey, something ain't right. They didn't um, like this shit in AC? I'm shit, no. <laughs> <laughs> the fucked up part is, who I think. Who the fuck is Daryl Strawberry? You don't even you don't know? know? I have no fucking idea He's a baseball is. player from like the Yankees. I don't even know, dude, we, my era hardly knows what baseball is. When were you is. born? 96. 
Oh my god, I can't believe you don't know Daryl Strawberry. Daryl Strawberry. Even a name like that, wouldn't you be curious? Like you've never heard the name before? I, I'm sure I've heard it. Wasn't he like a fucking fantastic player or something like that? No, he was a, he he potentially was, but then he was a cokehead and and a, yeah. and a drug addict and a he, I think he So I got a piece of information for you. So Do you? Do I got to do I got to pay for it? Ooh. Yeah. Sounds like it sounds like we're doing an episode of Law and Order. So I got a I piece used, of information for you. So I used to not sell, for nothing. Say not for nothing. Not for nothing. I <laughs> <laughs> I used to sell cars back in the day, while I was an actor. So being that I sold cars, I that we would also have a rent a car sometimes. We'd rent out. What time are you gonna leave? Rent a car. An hour ago. A rent a car. <laughs> <laughs> no, my next spot's at nine. Ten. Well, oh, you know you what? Said though? You had an errand. I, yeah, I got to get to this watch store before. Someone's okay, let me well. finish yeah. my Daryl no, Strawberry. No, I fucking bought a watch and it's already crapping out. I hate watches. Stop buying garbage off the street and you won't have problems. Fucking seven grand. I thought you, you just gonna, I thought you're gonna have fucking backhand with your your watch <laughs> hand. Boom. So this we rented this car to um, Daryl Strawberry and a few at the Yankee place. What well, year? Had to be ninety six, ninety seven, like All that, right. and. We found bags of cocaine, white powder wow. all over the rugs, needles, syringes. You wouldn't believe all the shit that we found in there. And like the guy had to wear like double gloves and and a, <laughs> and a mask and stuff. That was a that was for a rental car. It was a rental car. We'd wow. rent them out to um to. Who'd you work for, Avis? No, I worked for Manfredi Auto, and they baseball plays because they would they would make a deal with. Because if to bring the name up, mm -hmm. then make a deal. Have your players drive our Toyotas. Have your players drive our, our seat, you know. Our this is quite the piece of information. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even a piece. This is. Well, I was like, didn't I just tell you how to go to the watch store? <laughs> yeah. No, I got like time, 15 minutes. Time is of the essence now. And. I got to go to Coney Island and sell bubble guns, okay? And you got to worry about your fucking watch. You sell bubble gum? Bubble guns. I, you that? don't fuck with him. He's a big. He's a big boy. <laughs> Daryl Strawberry is like uh, really Christian now. Yeah. I worked with him. Not actually not that long ago during COVID. Yeah, yeah but you talked can't, about Jesus. You can't go time. by that. Daryl Strawberry. He's a. He's a. He's a, he's a mess. That's true. Maybe but that's what he wants go, me to think. Here's yeah, the thing that's that how I don't Chris understand. Day, that's here's the thing. Understand. How the fuck you go from being top notch drugs after drugs after drugs and boom, 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 boom and now. Holy Father <laughs> in heaven. Uh, just a different way of a, dealing with no, the problem. You that's today. a mental, that's a fucking whack of doing that. Sorry, Daryl. I say it. Kevin. I'm just going to say this. This might be our best show ever. Yeah. I mean, how many times does a guy start singing like a fucking choir yes. boy? <laughs> I wasn't a choir boy, but I almost became an altar boy. Yeah, I, I, I remember he, that story. He's, he's, but it, yeah, it's a beautiful thing because you're so new that that you don't even know stuff. You don't know Daryl Strawberry. You, you you like I need you to tell me stuff like that. The like you grew up with internet porn. That's yeah. fucking weird to me because I do a joke about like we grew up with, Play, with Playboy magazine. So that's how we jerked off to Playboy. Right. That's how I. That's how we met. We anyway, Latoya, <laughs> La, Latoya Jackson on not the cover. Not her. Not her. I did like the, the other one, the singer. What's her name? Janet. Janet. She Ooh. was hot for a while. She was yeah, very we, hot. We didn't do any magazines in my era. So, uh, but that's, but that's, yeah. So that's what I got to deal with. Like, I think my son is going through like that, you know, cause he, he, it's funny. Cause like, anyway, I don't want to go into this, but the point is that, that he's going to just I, let I, him I do whatever he's doing. No, he's I thought it was 12, 13, 14, 15. I didn't know it was fucking 10. So I don't think he might be, I don't think he's touching his dick yet, but. But I, but I think he's he gonna. I think he's gonna tell me when he is. I think he's gonna be like, Dad, why? Why he would he tell, you? tell you? Did you tell your dad when you started jerking off? Yeah, my, I didn't even. No, I wasn't. I wouldn't tell my dad anything. First so, of all, first of all, we, m me and my son, I'll, I'll be going to the store, or whatever. Like, like I always like to leave. The, if I don't have spots, yeah. like I always like to leave the house like, like eight o'clock because yeah. between eight and nine, nothing. It's like the kids are getting ready for You're bed. There's a lot of fucking. It's just a lot of fucking. Whatever. I like to just get out of the house That's and then come back and come back when they're about to go to sleep. So because that last hour is brutal. It's like the, it's like the last hour of work yeah. where you're like you just it takes forever. Anyway, so I'm, I'll go. I'm going to the store. My son will go. Always want to go to the store with me. And he gets real fucking chatty. So I think he's going to I think he's going to talk. No, he's not. Gonna I, think he's gonna I think he's going to tell me. I think he's going to tell me. Is this that thing that you don't tell your your, your parent? You would tell 
your sister or your brother. Not even your sister. If you had a Should brother. Should I bring it up with him? No. no. Should I be like, you jerking off yet? I'd be like, what? <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> that question is only followed by a crime. Like, you, you'll you'll know because he's you, gonna disappear a lot. Yeah, uh, and you're gonna find take socks. a lot of showers. Yeah. Socks, socks, socks. Yeah, yeah. my yeah. wife will your, find your a wife socks. will know from, yeah. from the laundry. From the I tell you, used to do a joke. He said my dad caught me uh, jerking off. I was in my room watching some porn on the TV. His dad walked in. He goes, "Move over." <laughs> <laughs> I got I got a joke that I do about that too. <laughs> hey, any subject you like, tell us the best that joke. Tell us the it. best. Shit, I got dude. a joke. I do that too. I go um. My mother constantly breaks my balls for grandchildren. Grandchildren, my dear grandchildren. I need grandchildren. I'm like, Ma, I haven't even gotten laid yet. And then the <laughs> audience will have an go, Yeah, next time my mother asks me for grandchildren, I'm going to hint to one of my socks. <laughs> and I go like that, like That's I'm dropping the sock. And then the audience will go, Ooh. I go, yeah. Your half of the room is like, Oh, the sock. And the other half is, What's a sock? And they laugh again. And I'll go, Yeah. Next time my mother asks, I'll, I'll make, I'll go, here you go, mom, it's a do-it-yourself kit. Now, technically, you know what that means. I'm giving her my cum for her to make a But grade. you don't even have cum, so you're pretending. Mm. Pretending. They don't know that. They don't know. Do you, I'm going to stand on the stage. You go, good evening, no, ladies and gentlemen. No, he goes up covered in cum. <laughs> good <laughs> like evening. A, like a glazed donut. <laughs> like a glazed donut at Krispy Kreme. It's like a blue man group kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> at Krispy Kreme. <laughs> Can I have a cum donut? <laughs> That's what crap. People are gonna people are gonna demand that we work together. Yeah. They're gonna the fans are gonna demand that this is some kind of a regular uh, rotation. Like, Big three. Can I have a cum donut? Oh, we don't call it cum donut. No, no, we look we at him like he's our son. We're like at a I'm party, and I, you know, you ever at a party and like a dog shows up or the kids and they tell you a story and you're like you're patient with them. And yeah, then you're like, yeah. that didn't even make any sense. But he's a, <laughs> but he's he's adorable, so you can't get mad at him. So so, but you're doing cum jokes and you don't come. That's yeah. like me doing fucking. Uh, well, I do do gay jokes and I'm not gay. But anyway, it's just it's funny to, that you're doing the sock joke and you don't even fucking you don't even jerk jerk off in a sock. No, that's fantastic. This is a, this this is why it's why I love show business. You know anyway, what, what? all right, let's wrap it up because I don't want to. I don't. <laughs> you know what Walt Disney said? I don't want outside of show business. <laughs> no, this is I. Well, this is this is a show business type studio. But I heard you're doing well. I heard the Patreon's doing well and all that shit, right? Podcast Who said that? Good. Who said that? You said that. You oh. said it on call. Walt, Dis <laughs> Walt Disney said it's kind it's of day fun. by day. Well, go ahead. Well, yeah, quote Walt Disney, and then we'll say goodbye. <laughs> You know what, you, guys, well, you cracked me up uh, when uh, Colin was talking to you about, on his show, you were very funny, and he goes, um, he goes, I've never even heard, he's like, you have a problem with Jessica Kirsten, I've never even heard somebody have an issue with her, and you went, I know, isn't it refreshing? <laughs> <laughs> it really cracked me well, up. Well, everyone's, everyone has the same, you know, whatever, they most mostly have the same take, and, and if it's somebody's, like, well-respected, they're yeah. just gonna be like, uh, oh, yeah, Jessica, no, I, I, yeah, I did have a problem with Jessica, what was it? Oh, oh I know what it was. It was about K Quigley. K Quigley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Ari's fucking starting shit with me because he's trying to get fucking uh, what you want to call it canceled. So I now I have a problem with Ari. Pong Dong. Pong Dong. Why does he have a problem with you? Oh, you keep. No, he Pong Dong. I I got him. <laughs> no, I got Pong Dong. Uh, first of all, it's funny because I don't even. I got him. I met him through Chad, and then and then I he did my podcast. I said it, and then he came to New York, and it was a monsoon like last summer. I said, well, if you ever come back, you know, I'll get you an audition. I got him the audition and he passed. So now I'm like a sponsor, but Ari's mad because he fucking canceled. Yeah, yeah. He got That's fucking... a crazy move on your end, dude. Yeah. And then, and then, why and would Tom, you do that? Tom Cassidy <laughs> said, this is my greatest work <laughs> that I got Pang Dang passed at the fucking comedy cell. This is like, Mwah. this is like, why would you do this that? This is like my greatest, because I promised I would. I'm a man of my word. I said I would get it, I would try to get him on audition. I sent it to Liz, the manager. She paid, and I thought, like, they love people of different ethnicities there right now. Here. So, yeah, I'll get you next. So then, so then, so then, lo and behold, you know, I, and so he auditions, and then I said, well, what did, what did Esty say? She goes, you know, if you put in, I'll give you spots because he doesn't live here, you know? Mm. So now, and I thought people would find out and maybe. What did get, Ari say? Maybe get, Ari was shitting on fucking Column's podcast about, uh, about uh, you know, a fucking comedy seller should be embarrassed. I'm like, he should be embarrassed. I'm like, it's not bad. Enough. It's not bad enough that they, they, these guys, these guys. Anyway, the point is, I said, you don't I, think it's a little fucked up what he did though? 
It's a little fucked up, but it's a, but Ari's Ari's the expert on that. Ari fucking Kobe Bryant died. Yeah, with but his you daughter. know it's a little fucked. Huh? Like, but no, but, but that was so makes it good. That's what makes it juicy. Well, basically, <laughs> basically he was to, he was trolling Tony Hinchcliffe by doing that. Yeah, and, Who? But you. you. Yeah, basically, but yeah. you just but you just took it much further than no, most people. No, because I'm a man Kevin of my word. Playing, yes. Kevin's uh, playing 3D which chess, which is hilarious. No, I said, I said, if you ever come back to New York, you know, yes. I'll, I'll try to get you. Know, I said, try. I didn't say I guarantee. They don't really listen to me, yeah. and it and then it worked. Well, well Ari is like the biggest defender of comics. So when you get a guy who like hurt a comic's career, no, yeah, but also he's, he's friends with him. Set. He's also friends with him, so he doesn't take the he doesn't consider the fact that like. Oh, he said, he said, oh, Pang Dang's wrong and he won't consider the fact that he's wrong. Okay. Well, Tony was wrong. And it, does he consider the fact that he was wrong? Does, does uh, Ari consider he was wrong when, when he fucking the Kobe, the Kobe Bryant shit. So, so it's like the fact that like these guys sit on their fucking. Yeah. Whatever. But Ari wasn't attacking a comic. With huh? Ari, Ari wasn't tr- hurting I know, but a it's still punching career. down, going after Pang Dang. Uh, Tony H. Clips is, is a cunt. I don't know him, but I'm guaranteed if he took a contest, he would score 100. <laughs> where, where, do you think you, so, where do you think you would place on a contest? I'm not saying I'm not a cunt, yeah. but I'm saying these so guys. So why would you hate a cunt? Because he's because he's a little fucking cunt. That's why. <laughs> he's like, he talks like he, you know. I, I, I heard like he's a that. really nice guy. Is he? That's what I heard. You can tell from his show that he fucking punches down and, and. He, he all he does on the show is shits on open micers. That's his brand. He was shitting on Pang Dang. Pang Dang stood up for himself, which was brave because he knew he's gonna get fucking pushed back. Ari punching down on Pang Dang. Uh, yeah, Tony Kevin, punching down on Pang Dang is not brave. Kevin, you and, and get off on were, finding a way to defend anything. No, but they're friends with Rogan, and then they're like, "Oh, we're brave because we're trying to cancel Pang Dang." It's like. You guys are already friends with the most powerful guy in comedy right now, but it's not, that's not enough. Now you got to punch down on fucking a little pang dang. He's not even a, he's an immigrant. He's a fucking immigrant. Like give the guy, give an immigrant a fucking break. He's not even from here. His parents don't even live here. I'm like his adopted dad. I hate that I'm going to be in Lev, this clip. Don't try to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Stop trying to figure no, it out. No, look, you are a natural contrarian and you love fucking with people. But like, but no. also, I stand I up for the little pissed. man. I stand up for the little man. I don't punch down. I don't punch down. So you're lucky. I don't punch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got to wrap it up. We got to wrap it up. Shout out, Ari. Shout out, Tony. Good guys. I, I, I listen. I'll never get mad at love. I don't care who you shout out, yeah. but I, 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 you're you're okay in my book because you Thanks, you buddy. always make a lot of sense. Thank you, dude. I, you really help me out with this women it thing. It scares me that you're the only guy that has told me that. No, the <laughs> women thing. You're a hundred percent right. Something else you said too is a hundred percent right. But the women thing is a hundred percent right. Guys don't want to go out. Women want to go out. They like to dress up and go out. Yeah. So that's that. They're taking over comedy clubs, and and we're we got to work around it. I don't. I'm almost retired. You kids. 50. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if he lived to be like 120 and he always looked like this? Yeah. 120 no, years, no coming. No coming. I was just going to say no <laughs> just. Oh, what a waste of a life. Wow. Why waste of a life? No, I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> we're, break, we're breaking balls here. Yeah, we're breaking his good nature ribbing like yeah. Bobby Kelly does. Yeah, nice. Right, go when are you going to fucking make that right? Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Just fucking Never. squash it, dude. Never. All right. <laughs> All, right. All right. Plugs. Um, I you know. Here? I know that your fan base is very engaged, and you guys are cool people. So, come check out. We just relaunched my podcast. It's doing pretty well. People are excited about it. So, come support that. It's the Love First Show. Anywhere you listen to podcasts, we also have a Patreon, and the you know we put a bonus episode every week. It's fucking really great. But if even if you're just on YouTube, drop some comments, drop some likes, just listen to the show. I think you'll dig it. And, um, What's you, it on YouTube? What's it called? Love First? Show? Yeah, just type in Love for on YouTube. Right. You'll see me come up. And All right. yeah, that's it. Am I going to be a guest on it? Probably not, Mario. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> but it's not because we're just going for a different thing. <laughs> what different thing? Different thing. We got we. We're, I'm getting Ari, Peng Dang, Dan. I'm getting. <laughs> we're just it's, it's a different, you know, different. Crowd. Peng Dang. I'll take it to the Japanese Chinese restaurant. I got to take out your girl. Wait, you have a Peng you Peng. have a Venmo or PayPal? Uh, I do have a Venmo. All right, what's you have Venmo or PayPal? Yes, I have Venmo. All right, just I'm join right. my Patreon. Just, just no, I'm, yeah, but I, I might, I might, I, I, yeah, I just want to know for myself. <laughs> okay, you're gonna request me for being here, huh? You're gonna charge me? <laughs> no, no, because no, 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 we might, we went long. I might have to throw some people. No, some we'll money. be okay. Don't worry about it. No, 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 I'll take care of that watch. We love you. <laughs> seven grand. <laughs> Whoa.
I think yeah. your wife will be like, where did you spend seven grand? And well, well, yeah, there, one more thing. Do women like watches? They're starting to wise up to them. They're starting to no, because they think it's like jewelry and it's like like it's hot for a guy to have a, a like a nice watch. It's not even that. It's uh, they're big in rap music now, so uh, people are always shouting out what watch they're wearing. So now, uh, if chicks are like savvy and they're trying to see how much a guy makes, they'll be like, "What's he wearing?" But I don't give a fuck <laughs> about that. I just really like watches. That's funny. Yeah, he doesn't even have a nice watch. It's, you know, these Miami chicks, that's what they're looking at now. It's so crazy, that the shit that changes, but it's still the same thing. They want a, they want a guy. Go ahead, Mario. All right. <laughs> what do I start? They want a statusy guy. All right. Why wouldn't you? I don't know. You want things in a woman that's yeah, statusy. I want a hot woman. You want a hot chick. It's the same shit. That's right. That's what I like. Shout out to the guys who fuck the non-hot women. Just shout out. Yeah. <laughs> I was, Adam. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Levy was talking. <laughs> Levy was saying, "Oh, I saw. I was on Twitter, and uh, he, I saw he was on Twitter. He goes, Dave Landau is selling sold out two shows like in Colorado. I go, well, yeah, it's Colorado. I go, but his wife is fat. Like, <sighs> like I said, what would you? We could have just wrapped, Kevin. I said, <laughs> well, I said, I said, what would you rather have? And he goes, yeah, good point. And I go, <laughs> and his girlfriend's fat. So it's like. Yes, a wife and a girlfriend. Yeah. So what is that? What you want? So I'm like, I can't do it. I can't do it. So the guys that can, good for you. Good for you. You must. Good for you. Can I finish? Yes. Good for you, because (laughs) I don't know what would happen if we're all all fighting over the same uh, twenty women. You know what I mean? If we're all fighting over, what do you think would happen? I don't know, but I think (laughs) I'd be the odd man out. I think I might have a problem. (laughs) <laughs> but I'm saying if everybody was fighting over the, but I, I can't, I, I can't, I don't even like looking at a, a, a fat girls or a, ugly women. I don't even want them in my fucking peripheral. <laughs> but if guys are marrying them and fucking them, good for you. Cause it, it just, it makes it easier for the guys that want hot women that we, there's not a huge crowd around every hot girl. Cause some guys would be like, I don't, I don't need the aggravation. I need the aggravation. <laughs> I'm getting to the point now. I don't even. I don't even jizz when I'm with my wife. I'm kidding, but I'm like, I'm. I'm getting to the point where like my sex drive is is still okay, but like sometimes I just appreciate my wife's hot. Yeah. Like I'm like, wow, she, my wife's hot. Like I don't tell her because I don't want to get fucking turned right, into right, an right. egomaniac. But I'm like, I, I, I'm like, I appreciate the fact that she's hot. Well, that's why I had a tweet that was like, if you're gonna have a hot girlfriend, you have to deal. You're gonna have to just accept the ball breaking. She's yeah. gonna annoy the fuck out of you. Yeah. It's like my next girlfriend won't even resemble a human. <laughs> but it'll be grateful. <laughs> that's, that's what you want. Or you get somebody from a third world country and they fucking need immigration status. Go yeah. ahead, Mario. What, the dump truck woman? No, you plugs, got plugs. Are you got plugs? Yeah, I got plugs. Uh, so I, you can see me at Governor's Comedy Club every of weekend. You can. Of course. What's your website or your, uh, my or your website easiest is, place to find you? Okay, website, Mario Bosco Comedy. Dot com um huh? and my Twitter and Instagram and TikTok is also Mario Bosco Comedy. All right, thanks. And Jim Stansel loves you. Uh, he's a regular listener on the show, and he every time you're on, hey, he Jim. gets really he really enjoys he it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He if might he, jizz. If he and, does, you got a bigger problem on your hands. And <laughs> real jizz, too. Not just fucking air jizzing. I need everybody to follow me. And jizz. And jizz. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. New studio. We'll see what happens in the future. God bless America. Yeah.